These are the most accomplished drivers in the world. They have conquered everything there is in motorsports. But today, on this track, they need something else. Something they rarely rely on. Luck. Insane speeds. No space. Steep turns. This going to be big. A huge wreck. Talladega doesn't care who you are. It wants to beat you. So luck, not a bad thing to have today. This is Talladega. Fox Sports welcomes you to the Geico 500 at the world's fastest speedway in Talladega, Alabama. About a third of the way between Birmingham and Atlanta is this site, a former Air Force pilot training base. Bill France Jr. flush with, or Bill France flush with success at Daytona, wanted to expand the footprint of super speedway racing. He got Alabama Governor George Wallace to grant him this site. And the track that he has built here, he knew to attract fans, had to be bigger, wider, faster than Daytona. And it has exceeded everybody's dreams. Joining me, NASCAR Hall of Famers, Daryl Waltrip and Jeff Gordon, with a total of 10 combined wins here at Talladega. Usually we're talking about the big one, and we might later today, but the words on everybody's lips all weekend have been closing rate. Yeah, I ran the uh, Motor Coach 500 uh, last night, and I talked to drivers, <laughs> crew chiefs, even spotters, Mike, and they said the closing rate is so huge. You have such a great burst of speed that they're worried about they're going to run over the car in front of them. And if that run's coming and I'm I'm looking in my mirror, I, I have my spotter giving me all this information, I've got two decisions that I'm going to make. Is that closing rate such that if I block it, I'm causing the big one? But if I don't block it, I'm going to maybe go to the back. So it's going to be pretty challenging for these drivers and spotters today. Larry, how, what do you have there, buddy? Well, Darrell Walter talked about the closing rate. And think about it. With this aero package, these drivers only had one 50-minute practice on Friday, and there's no question the closing rate was huge. So we have an aero animation with what we call air molecules that will show you why the closing rate is so great when you're talking about 2018 to 2019. Think about the air behind a car is like the wake of a boat. Look at last year on the bottom there. Not a very big wake. The car that was closing up on the lead car was in dirty air. But look at 2019. That wake is much bigger. That puts that car behind that car in clean air. And that's why the closing rate will be so great. Closing rate may be the secondary story. Big one, I think, will be the primary. You can pull up, but can you pass? That's the question to be answered here today. The starting grid will scroll across the bottom of the screen. Two rounds of single car qualifying. The top 12 ran for the Bush pole. Well, the Fords were favorite in Daytona. They won everything but the 500. Let's find out, Jeff, if they're favored today. Well, one of those favorites might just be this guy. Brad Keselowski, this is Jeff. The guys up at the Fox Sports booth, you got me? Yes, sir. How are you, Jeff? Well, man, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, you know, we've never seen a package like this that much drag that big of a hole being punched in the air and this much horsepower i'm just curious how did you prepare for this race today yeah you're right jeff uh, i don't think we've ever seen anything with this much drag and this much closing rate so it reminds me uh, a lot of the trucks and i think uh, some of the races they've had there were good to look at try to understand i expect the race to be uh, much different we'll probably run a lot lower on the racetrack today than we've been the last few years here and uh You'll probably see the inside lane have a lot more strength. So uh, we'll see anything you prepare for. I think that's a good way of uh, throwing you something different. So we'll try to be ready for it. All right. Well, thanks for talking to us. Good luck. All right. Have a good one, Jeff. Thanks for picking me, by the way. I think we got a real fast snap on Monday. <laughs> now, the Toyotas did not qualify well. And, Daryl, they're all going to have to go to the back. They didn't show their speed at Daytona until it came time to win the race. Yeah, let's talk to Denny Hamlin and see if he can give us a little insight. Hey, Denny Hamlin, it's DW up here in the Fox Sports booth, buddy. You got me? I got gotcha. you. Denny, it, it looked like you guys uh, maybe struggled a little bit here on Friday. Uh, the cars didn't look like they drove that well. You didn't qualify. All that great. You're 23rd. How do you feel about the race today? Have you got things sorted out? I certainly hope so. Uh, you know, this whole FedEx team worked hard on it uh, to get it driving well, and we, we did that at 
and uh, hopefully, you know, the qualifying is not indicative of how we race. Uh, it hasn't been in the past, so I would suspect, you know, everything's going to be situational. You just got to somehow make it to the checker flag. All right, buddy. Well, you won the Daytona 500 in uh, similar conditions, so good luck. Therefore, thanks. Now, each of the three competing manufacturers have their own agenda for these 500 miles, and our three pit reporters have those stories. Jamie Little. Well, Mike, Chevrolet has not won a race since October of last year. They want to end that today, and by doing so, they must work together. Someone on Austin Dillon's team told me this morning that the way the Chevy teams have worked together this weekend, he hasn't seen that in 10 years. Executives from Chevrolet, drivers, team owners, you name it, have been together to talk strategy and stopping the other manufacturers from winning today. They have 18 cars in the field. That's more than anybody else. Their plan, keep those Chevys together, start to finish. Matt Yoakum. Jamie, last fall, Stuart Haas Racing worked the teamwork plan to perfection. Three months ago, the morning of the Daytona 500, the Ford drivers all met with Edsel Ford to further define the rules of engagement. Several Ford drivers told me this morning, now with the Super Speedway rules here at Talladega, all that is out the window. They know they've got friends in Ford, but more than likely, they're going to have to be the Lone Ranger. Vince? Well, there's no question there's strength in numbers, and if you have enough numbers, you can impact the strategy of the others around you. So how does that affect the Toyotas? Only seven of them, less than half the fleet of the other two manufacturers. Well, the Toyota crew chiefs told me today that it will really emphasize the need to work in unison, not just on the racetrack, but coming to pit road and exiting pit road as well. They'll likely pick up some friends along the way if they do indeed execute to perfection. By the way, the four Gibbs cars all going to the back for unapproved adjustments affecting the airflow to the cockpit. So they'll start the race, at least the Gibbs cars, together. Larry McReynolds. Yeah, Vince, let's take a look at our race analysis. We'll go 188 laps, 500 miles. Our stages will be 55, 55, and 78 to the checkered flag. Pit road speed, 55 miles per hour. There were 17 pit road speeding penalties last year. The fuel window, 36 to 40 laps, and the back of the field is going to get very busy back there because Vince just mentioned the Joe Gibbs drivers. They will be joined by Ryan Newman, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., as well as Cody Ware and Reed Sorensen. And Mike, a cool story. Brendan Gaughan is back in that 62 car, but Tyler Reddick qualified it yesterday because Brendan went back to New Las Vegas for his son's first Holy Communion. Very cool. Family first, Larry. That's that 4,000 foot backstretch here at Talladega. Just one of many great facts about the world's greatest super speedway. Bill France built. It cost $6 million to build in 1969. 33 degree banking in the turns, two degrees more than Daytona. Bill Elliott set NASCAR's all time qualifying record here. You can see that car in the Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn. And coming soon, a $50 million infield redevelopment project. And where those tents are, that's where the fans will be right in the middle of the Cup Series garage area. What a beautiful day. It started out sunny, but now there is quite a cloud cover. Ambient temp 76, track temp 105. As that new Forge Edge ST with 330 horsepower makes the turn onto pit road. And remember, the start finish line is not in the middle of the trial, well, as it is in Daytona. It's way down here toward turn one. You got a lot to think about between the middle of the trial and the start finish line. And Mike, you, you got to be willing to play well with others. You're going to have to work with other teams, whether it's your manufacturer or not. And folks, let me tell you, my heart is pumping. The green flag is in the air. Buggity, buggity, buggity. Well, let's go racing, boys, and please be nice to each other. You can see those alliances starting to form. Those Fords in the outside lane, all those Chevys lined up on the inside lane. Well, it was a Chevy Ford front row. Austin Dillon electing the inside, and the Fords formed up quickly up high behind Eric Elmerola.
still building speed as they come to the trial hall. And Mike, I think that two car jumping out front, if I was the rest of the competition, I'd be a little worried about that. Because Brad is one of the best of working one side to the other. Whichever lane has the energy, whichever lane has the momentum, that's the lane he goes in. You know, in football, they always talk about watching tape. And I have a feeling a guy like Brad Keselowski, I bet he watched a lot of tape going back, maybe even all the way to 2000 when we had a roof rail on top of these cars and this much drag or close to this much drag to learn what he could about this race today. And, there, and, and you hit the, the, nail on the, hit the nail on the head, Jeff. There's a lot to be learned in these early stages of this race with this aero package. What's my car going to do and how am I going to handle it? Martin Truex way up on the high side, bringing Stenhouse, Suarez, and De Benedetto with him. And remember, that 19 of Martin Truex Jr., he had to go to the back. He was one of those cars for an unimproved adjustment. He's made up a lot of ground, and so is his teammate there, Eric Jones, on the inside. Darrell, what did the Gibbs teams do to their cars that caused them to have to go start in the back? Yeah, they have a hose that's in the right side window that uh, blows air, I think, probably to the driver's feet or on the driver. And they were crimping that hose shut so that the air couldn't get in the car. So a minor thing, but uh, NASCAR didn't like it. Not allowed to make those adjustments after qualifying and after inspection. There are two of the Gibbs cars working their way toward the front. Where one of them finished the in Daytona. One in front of that, uh, 43. Well, pretty obvious here. You got Jimmy Johnson, Kyle Busch, a couple others that are back there in the back. I think they're playing a little bit different strategy. I think they know there might be a big one today, and they might try to play it a little bit safe to get further back. They know also they can save some fuel back there. Well, and when you got good cars back there with you, as long as you keep the lead pack in sight, pretty close by, in touch, you're not going to lose that much. And you got somebody to help you get up there if you have to. It was always kind of nice to have three or four fast cars kind of riding at the back if you were back there by yourself. Here comes Truex, wow. steaming around the outside and bringing a fast train with him. Well, he's got one of the best pushers and one of the most aggressive drafters right behind him in Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Joey Logano came up to block. Man, see that, uh, we call them cow flaps. They're actually a part of the hood now. I, those things are flapping all over the place. I talked to a bunch of the guys. They actually increased the size of the bolts that hold those flaps because they saw them jumping around so much. Well, I think some of these teams are going to have a hard time keeping some body panels on these cars today, and I'm not talking about from Rex. Yeah, I know. The, the turbulence around these cars is incredible. In the middle, Ryan Blaney trying to bring Michael McDowell along. Those front row cars have shown a lot of speed. They're Fords. There's Blaney in the 12, McDowell in the 34, and their new teammate this year, Matt Tift, in the 36, trying to make something happen. Just remember, Mike, that when you're up high, like we see the, uh, the 22 car, Joey Gone, you're running a much bigger circle. So that bottom is going to get ahead of you. Wow, did you see right there? And this is what I think you got to worry about. You saw Joey Logano moved up to block the 19 Mark Truex Jr. They made a little bit of contact because of that closing rate, and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. shot down the middle to take advantage of it. Stenhouse with a run gets right to the bumper of Logano. And you see how that's shaking? That's how it feels in the car. That car, this is not a smooth ride. Whoa! Whoa. Stenhouse just slammed the door on Martin Truex. Yes, it won't he be did. the last time we say that. Vince. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. qualified sixth. And when I asked his crew chief, Brian Patty, if he was concerned about giving up all that track position, having to go to the rear for those unapproved adjustments, he said very simply, if you can't get back to the front in 55 laps, you got bigger problems. I'm not worried at all. <laughs> and we see exactly why. But he lost his momentum here, trying to hold Truex back and look where he's headed. Yeah, and see, that's what I think these guys are going to be learning this first portion of this race is how big of a run is, is going to come from behind and what do I need to block? He moved up to block that 19 when he should have probably just stayed behind Joey Logano in that middle lane. Well, just think about Truex. He was almost to the front of the, the outside line, almost pulled up to the front of the inside line there. And look where he is now. I mean, that outside line just doesn't seem to go anywhere when that bottom stage formed up. And remember, you know, that closing rate is such that that means you have to make very quick decisions. It's got to be either instinctive or it's got to be thought out. But when it happens that fast, there's not a lot thinking about it. You just go. Bubba Wallace, a Daytona 500 runner-up. Right behind Michael McDowell, and now 
back up to the top side two by two and Mike you have to trust you got to have a lot of trust and that's hard for a driver to do you got to trust the spotter when he says clear get down you got to get down right then you can't hesitate you got to trust the guy behind you, you got to trust so many things around you to stay out of trouble Austin Dillon in the three started from the pole he's dropped back to seventh first driver to win a pole for a cup race on his birthday since Jeff Bodine at North Wilkesboro 1986. My goodness. I was there. <laughs> Did you get cake? <laughs> uh, they were working on the triangle back in those days. <laughs> the Bodine triangle. You see a little bit of debris on the nose of the two car Brad Keselowski. I, I think it's out of the way where it's not going to affect the uh, cooling too much. So we'll keep an eye on it. What well, we saw yesterday, Jeff, the cars out front were the ones that picked up the trash. They got to the trash, picked it up. They had a lot of trouble with that yesterday. Yeah, but Logano's got some too, Jamie. I talked to Joey Logano this morning about what he needs from his spotter, TJ Majors. He said he can't talk enough. I want him talking the entire time. And I don't want him to give me suggestions. I want him to be deliberate. When he tells me something, I'm going to do it. And after that move you saw as he led this pack, he reminded TJ, I need you to be deliberate on your calls. Well, I don't think there's a better spotter up there. You remember, he was Dale Jr.'s spotter for a long time. So he knows what he's doing. Ryan Blaney takes the lead. Penske has won six of the last nine here. Cautions out at Talladega. A lot of damage for several cars. Bubba Wallace coming down the front straightaway past the start finish line, bump drafting on the 12 of Ryan Blaney. Watch the right of your screen and see what happens. You can see connects to the rear bumper, Ryan Blaney, and he tries to jump out to pass him but they were still connected and made contact. Blaney actually got pretty lucky to come out of it the way he did, but unfortunately, it turned Bubba sideways. Michael McDowell is collected, and behind them, Clint Boyer, Kevin Harvick, and more. You can see that, that hood flap. That means you're in that pocket of air that you can stay connected to that rear bumper of the car in front of you. Yeah, he just moved to the, he moved to his left, and when you hit that car on the left side, it just, and that's also as he turned back to the right these cars when you turn back to the right they load on that left rear and it just turned him sideways to the right you'll see a lot of that that's why these cars uh, aren't as stable as they used to be riding with daniel suarez it's wallace in the middle pushing blaney just ahead of the 11 of hamlin stay up there stay up stay up wow. stay up they're wrecking behind you keep digging cars close call joey logano Looking back. I mean, from that angle, you'd almost think, well, Ryan Blaney was trying to block that run, but it looked to me check like he didn't have a ahead. choice. Check he was up, just holding on to the wheel. And when Bubba jumped out, they just touched a slight bit. Nice and easy. Somebody hooked the 14 of Clint Boyer, and that shot him right up into his teammate, Kevin Harvick. Now a lot of damage to his car. And they had such a great hopes for today. We're running up in the high lane and got caught up. Yeah. And uh, that looks like part of McDowell's number 34, uh, semi-attached to yeah, Jimmy Johnson's car. The eight car picked up a piece of debris. Uh, I think it oh, the splitter. Quite a bit of debris. <laughs> Whose splitter is that? <laughs> Probably McDowell. It's not Matt Tiff's. Yeah. <laughs> His is intact underneath. He's Might have, have been from his teammate. He's going to have a little more front downforce than I think he'd like. Wow, that car is killed. And, you know, going back to Bubba Wallace and, and Ryan Blaney, those two are best friends. I mean, these guys hang out, do things together, go on vacations together. But when you get out there on the racetrack, there's no friends. I mean, you you got to go and compete with one another. They were best they friends. Were. <laughs> I don't know about it. We'll see how it goes to, yeah, tomorrow. Today, anyway. <laughs> Well, Larry McReynolds, now NASCAR requires a certain amount of parts to be on these cars, and there's only so much you can replace. What are these teams' options? 
Well, the biggest thing, Mike, is the clock that's fighting them. It's a six-minute damage repair clause clock, and they have to get under the six minutes and get back up to minimum speed when we go back racing. But pretty much things like the rear bumper cover, it's mandatory. The deck lid's mandatory. Anything like that in the nose itself, it's not necessarily mandatory, but there's no way you'd want to be racing here at Talladega without the nose. But what's interesting about this time of this caution, Mike, is remember my fuel window was about 36 to 40 laps. We're getting real close to the threshold of being able to pit now and make it to the end of stage one at 55 laps. Okay, Larry, pit road has not yet opened during this first caution of the day. Denny Hamlin in and out with a good bit of repair to the right front of his car. And I'm looking at what, what this piece is. I don't think that's a splitter. I think it's actually the pan that connects to the splitter that goes underneath the radiator. I don't know what it is, but it's stuck. It it's big and it's stuck. cannot get it out. And now Matt Tift was behind his teammate, the 34 of McDowell. Let's see what happens once again here. Also, let's not forget the nose of that Camaro is a little bit pointed there, and we've seen where it's turned some guys sideways. That is Matt Tiff's car under the damage repair policy. Uh, looks like they'll be able to send him out, get him back up to minimum speed. Then he would be able to make further repairs. Kevin Harvick, though, with some serious damage on his plaid flannel number four. Hey, there's the Bush guy. Uh, he should be concerned. Maybe he can help affect repairs there. I'm told two things you never wear to Talladega are flannel and ties. Oh. So what put him in one category us? and put us <laughs> in the other. Here, take this tie. Uh -oh. <laughs> Quick. Kevin Harvick's actually come to a stop. Yeah, he got a good bit. Of, he hit that outside wall really hard. And Kevin and uh, Clint Boyer hit him really hard on yeah, the left exactly. side. Yeah, I got to believe they got to be running short on time here on this damage vehicle policy. Vince, pit road's open. Eric Jones pitting from third. He'll stop a little short in his pit box so he doesn't get blocked in by the eight, which will pit in front of him. Jones, gas only. Matt? And looking at fuel only for a number of different cars in my area. In fact, the 18 of Kyle Busch, their game plan was the Larry Mack move. Jamie? Joey Logano in the 22, fuel only, but they looked at the nose. He said the pace car spit up some debris into the nose. They looked at it, looks like it's okay. Man, you're having a bad day when this pace car throws something <laughs> into your grill. Uh, looking at Alex Bowman picking up 11 spots, we'll check to see did he stop uh, in his pit stall. There's Boyer back out. The left side looked fine. Oh, yeah, he's got a lot of damage to that car. First caution of the day, 14 laps in in Talladega. Bubba Wallace's Richard Petty Motorsport Chevy being hauled back to the garage area after triggering a pileup on lap 11 that's put us under this first caution. Speeding penalties, exiting the pits, Chase Elliott, Ryan Blaney, Kyle Busch. They will all go to the back. Uncontrolled tire uh, for Ryan Priest and Jeffrey Earnhardt. They will go to the back. Alex Bowman did miss his pit. He came in on the next lap along with other cars that didn't stop the first time around. So we cycle through to Joey Logano and Daniel Suarez to restart on the front row. And one other note on pit road, Chase Elliott had a little damage falling off the jack. Right line, 17 in line with you, one's in line with the 42. Still all in line, all in line, still all in line. 17 pushing you, 17 pushing you, still pushing you. Got the two pushing the 10 in front of you, clear to the line now. Three wide, headed for turn three. In the middle still, in the middle, in the middle. Just one inside, now you got help. Looks like Truex said that outside didn't work so hot. I'm going to drop down here in the bottom. That looks a little bit better line for me. Well, one thing's for sure after that incident we just saw with Bubba Wallace and Ryan Blaney, it hasn't slowed anybody down for putting blocks together and trying to stop that momentum from behind. Here's Brad Keselowski talking about pushing other cars. These guys in the second lane must have been pushing pretty darn hard, huh? Yes, sir. See, 
like the middle went away just a little bit, but once the top formed back up, they were able to get a little bit of push off the corner by covering that lane. So I don't know if there's anything to that or if just the people pushing in the middle. And we're, while we're talking about pushing, I mean, it, it, there's a big difference between the front bumpers of these race cars. That Ford Mustang has a very flat front bumper. The Toyota, even though it has these, these points out on the outer edges, the middle of it's pretty flat. But that Chevy Camaro has a distinct character line that makes the nose very pointed. Eric Almarola back out front. Here's Vince. Well, and one victimized by that accident was Michael McDowell. The team had been so optimistic heading into the day. What did you see, Mike? Yeah, not a whole lot. Um, you know, just pretty early on um, to be that aggressive. And, you know, unfortunately for Love's Travel Stop Ford, uh, we were just wrong place, wrong time. I didn't really see what happened. Just uh, saw the 43 coming up the racetrack, and that was about it. So, yeah, it was just disappointing. We've had such good speed and, and such a great uh, super speedway program, and, and really hopeful for today. And, you know, to be out so early on is, is very disappointing. But, you know, it's out of your control. It's part of super speedway racing. Mike. McDowell hoping to follow up on his top five finish in the Daytona 500. Looks like, uh, you know, over on the right side, the outside line, looks like the 42, the one, those are Chevrolets. Uh, look like the Chevy guys might be trying to group up on the outside and get a little shove up near the front and see if that works for them. It's a pretty cool move that I saw Joey Logano do through the middle three and four. He was on that bottom lane, and he shot up to the middle lane, and what that did was then that forced the guys on that second lane to the third lane. But so far, that third lane seems to still have the most the most momentum and, and organization of those cars and those Chevys. All right, Vince is caught up with Bubba Wallace. Bubba out of the uh, care center, checked and released. The front bumper versus the uh, the front bumper of your Chevrolet versus the rear of the Ford. Did that have any significance in the uh, incident, or was it just uh, too much bump? No, it wasn't. It wasn't that. It was just the, the, the amount of runs that we're getting into. The force of it is. Uh, all I was trying to do was just do some wreck avoidance. I didn't want to wad up the 12. That's the last car I want to wad up out there and had such a big run on him. When the 22 pulled up, he checked up a little bit and uh, I went to go to the bottom where I was safe. And I don't know if I crossed his bumper or whatever, uh, but it got him wiggled down and shoved me even farther down than I wanted to go. So I went back up just to stay off the apron and it just unloaded. So it was just uh, unfortunate, but try not to wreck my, my buddy Ryan and cost our day and some others so apologize but uh, we should have been wrecked a couple laps before that the 11 had a big run on us and let me in throughout the middle so I appreciate that but just uh, we were fast I was just trying to I was just trying to ride and, uh, and not wreck somebody and wreck myself tough start Mike two cars out of the race in the early going and we've been talking about the front end Design of these cars trying to mirror their street counterparts and on the right look at that Camaro come to a point right underneath the bow tie And I do think that's going to be a factor in this race later you know, Because you're here. gonna to have to be very aggressive pushing in the later stages of this race I mean they didn't touch much and I don't know if it would have mattered if it had a front front a Ford front bumper or a Toyota front bumper in that situation no, but I do think later in this race, it's going to be a factor because you're going to have to be really aggressive. And I think that's when some of these Chevy guys think they got a little bit of a disadvantage with that pointed nose. Yeah, it's just that sliding across the rear bumper, the 12. I mean, he just barely touched him. But that's all it takes when you're running 200 miles an hour. As proof that you can win this race from anywhere you start or restart. Kyle Busch was one of those drivers that got busted for speeding. And there's the candy man all the way back up to seventh place since the restart. Actually, I have a little bit of a breakaway here with these front seven yeah, cars. Yeah, I was going to say, Jeff, that's something that uh, looks like this front group right here, mostly Fords, led by uh, Eric Amarola and uh, Fred Kozlowski. They're pulling a little gap between that second pack. Back to Vince. Another victim of that incident uh, involving Bubba Wallace was Kevin Harvick. What did you see, Kevin, and what could you do? Um, you know, I really thought I went to the back to start and thought that that was going to happen several times throughout the day and got myself back there and it looked pretty tame so I decided to go back to the front and, and drove back up there you know fairly easy and then I don't I don't really know what happened they all wrecked and I slowed down and somebody hit me in the door and I hit the wall. Thanks Kevin. Mike. <laughs> That's simple I hit somebody hit me in the door and I hit the wall. <laughs> Not much else to say. Well you just saw right there 
The 41 of Daniel Suarez got a big run. We talked about that closing rate. He got a big run on Kyle Busch, jumped to the outside, and got Ryan Blaney and a couple others to go with him and made up a bunch of spots. Tell you one thing, though, those Fords are strong. Amarola is strong. Keselowski is strong. Turex is hanging third. Sinhouse, Ford strong. Jones, Toyota strong. Chevrolet qualified on the pole, Austin Dillon. But right now, Ford has seven of the top ten positions. Toyota, the other three. Yeah, the best uh, Chevrolet right now is Larson in 12. Working lap 25 at Talladega. Eric Almirola and Brad Keselowski leading in Ford Mustangs. Here's today's Ford Performance track facts. Seven straight victories at Talladega for Ford. Joey Logano, whom you're watching, owns three of them. Brad Keselowski, two. Ricky Stenhouse and our race leader, Eric Almirola, the winner here last fall when he led only the final lap of this race. He's Mike, your leader right now. Always like to, to always like to talk about the sum of all the parts. We look at Eric Almirola, great driver, but that's a great team. And, and, and Keselowski, that's a great team. From the spotter to the crew chief to the driver to the car they're driving, they got everything in place. Jimmy Johnson with a lot of right side damage. While we were away, he hit the wall up in turn three. Here's a look at it. Piece of debris flies up there. And the result. Blew a right front tire. I hit a piece of debris or something and freaking blew the right front tire. Well, Mike, I know you won't believe this, but it was 17 years ago today that he got his first win at the uh, Auto Club 17 years ago. And seven that. championships later and, and a Boston Marathon two weeks ago which Johnson won in just over a ran in just over three hours. And all those wins that he has but 83 of them I believe man uh, he's had a rough going on these big super speedways lately. Yeah last couple of years have not been kind to Mr. Johnson. Leading that outside lane. Whoa Joey Logano slides up the hill Jamie. And Joey Logano in the 22 getting a little frustrated with the fellow Ford driver. This was on his radio about the 41 of Daniel Suarez. Leave the 41 hanging. I'm all about it. Yep, 10 4. We still race. It's all good, man. Lined up up top. Long race. He's hung every blue over from the beginning of this race. He just hung Blady. He just hung the 21. He ain't hung me. He's done. <laughs> now, I, I, I got to believe, listen, you have to pick your fights. You can't get angry or upset about every time something go the way you want it to. It's too early. We've only run 30 laps. You can't get angry at somebody now. It's a long way to go. Yeah, but what that tells me is that they had a meeting. They had a group get together with Ford, and they talked about working with one another. So when one of those Fords is behind you that you're hoping it's going to work with you, even though it's not necessarily a teammate, and I did see this happen earlier where Suarez had some big runs, and he just felt like he needed to take that run to the outside lane, and he sort of hung out the 22 of Logano and a couple others. Yeah, well, I, I've been right. Uh, you've been racing. I've been racing a long time. You, there are no perfect scenarios. You lay it all out, and you got a perfect plan, but it's hard to execute when you get on the racetrack. Absolutely. So now Logano has his teammate Ryan Blaney right behind him. Matt, Mike, think back to the Daytona 500 two years ago. Blaney spent much of the race out front leading. Josh Williams, the spotter, told me, don't expect that today. The biggest challenge is trying to control the lane. You can't do it. You can't be the leader and control the lanes like you could in the past. We just saw there the 42 just went, they just left the 12 car hanging out the drive. And this is exactly what I talked about in our opening, is that if, if you don't block that run, this is the result. You can go all the way to the back. That's about 10 miles per hour slower that you lose when you have that big spoiler catching all that air. And Jeff, he was just running. He was up there trying to fight for the lead, running second. And look at him now. And woe be gone to you if you lose the draft. A single car going around here is four seconds a lap slower than those cars in the lead oh, draft. Yeah, yeah, you just cannot lose that lead draft or you are done. Let's see what happened to Blaney. <sighs> You'll see going down the back. Here's Blaney on the outside. Now, see, he's riding along behind his teammate, and, and you saw Larson. He knew he had a Chevrolet of Kurt Busch behind him. He knew if he, should, if he went to the inside, he was going to have somebody to go with him. It just, it's just amazing how quickly you, you think something happened to your car. You'll swear the engine laid down on you. Well, it's like they put a parachute on that 12. 
And in fact, as we go three wide for the lead, Kyle Larson trying to put his Chevrolet out front. That's pretty much, much what NASCAR did for this race. Still they extended the rear Next bumper couple a couple of inches. The rear tomorrow. spoiler now Still nine outside. inches tall, plus a one-inch gurney lip at the top of it. It's like dragging a parachute if and you're by yourself. Two, two teammates right there, too. 42 car to one, and that one was fast in practice, so uh, not surprising to see them up there, and we see Logano charging back. I don't know if those Chevys can push, but they got plenty of speed. Two inside, no hole, no hole, two inside. Chip Ganassi racing out front. Kyle Larson, who's had one mistake-free race all year, or trouble-free race, let's say, not mistake. And Kurt Busch, who for the first five races had Chevrolet's only top five finishes. He's in the number one. You know what I see, Mike? And it's been a while since I've seen this. You can be leading and get pushed out of the line. You can fall way back, like we saw Logano but they have enough horsepower and enough throttle response that you can get yourself back to the front. You don't just pull out and pass, but you can work yourself back to the front. And that is the big difference with this year's engine configuration. 550 horsepower at Talladega. That's approximately 100 horsepower more of pull up to pass power than these drivers had last year. Well, they kind of kind of broke up that outside lane when this inside lane started working. And I think they did a little bit of push in there to get a big run to put Amarillo out front. Here's another look. There you go, the 19 to the rear punch, bumper of the punch, two car. Bump, now bump, boom, bump. boom. And there they go. Just that little bit of a momentum. And then look what it does. And how well those bumpers line up. And you know what I like about Truex? He learned his lesson. He got up on that outside. He lost a bunch of spots. He got himself back down on the bottom, and he's in third place, and you ain't going to move him. 35 laps complete. Eric Almarola and Brad Keselowski out front. We've had one caution flag with four cars out of the race as a result. 16 laps to go in stage one. Eric Almirola out front of Brad Keselowski, Martin Truex, David Reagan, and Kyle Busch. Now going to break, they were working on Matt Tiff's car, which is now out of the race. You saw the Sawzall trying to remove a big blade from that front bumper cover. It looks like it came off Michael McDowell, his teammate's car. There it is, going right into the front end of Tiff's car. And that has put them out of the race. Larry, uh, what's up there? Well, what it is, and we'll use our Ford Performance Cutaway car to show you exactly what's stuck in the front of that 36 car, Matt Tiff. It came off of Michael McDowell's 34 car. It's the radiator pan. It's an extension of the front splitter underneath the car. The yellow part is the front splitter, but this is the radiator pan right here, and it is huge. It's 37 inches wide by 28 inches deep, and what that does along with that front splitter, it creates a ton of front downforce, but it is mammoth, and that's what you saw stuck in the nose of Matt Tiff's car. And, and again, we've seen the violence, the, the, the way the cars shake and the way the cars are moving. And uh, you get some air under, and that pan is so big uh, that it's just sucked it right out by the car in that accident. Well, and the reason why they need to have such a big pan is with that big rear spoiler, if you want the car to be balanced out properly, you've got to create more front downforce as well as that rear downforce. Chase Elliott working with a group of Chevrolets. Mountain Dew and Little Caesars team up today to give away a free two liter of any Pepsi product when you purchase any pizza using the Little Caesars app. Fourteen to go in stage one. Larry talked about the fuel window and fuel is a concern on the two way radios. Here's Eric Jones team. Getting a blur from the fuel mileage here, just to FYI as they get more straightened out. Like, I don't know if two or three of those guys in the lead can actually do this. We just need to be cognizant. We used a little bit of extra fuel just to get this spot, but I'm milking it right now. We can see that you had to use it to get caught up, and then now you're done better. So I'll keep you aware. How about his teammate just ahead, Kyle Bush, Matt? Due to that speeding penalty, Mike, remember, he came back down pit road to serve the penalty. He topped off. Jeff, you were spot on. Tony Hirschman III, a spotter, told me this morning, the runs will happen so fast. The information he gives Kyle, it's up to him. He cannot hesitate when he makes a move.
Now, how about the Ganassi cars? They're back in 11th and 12th, the leading Chevrolets, uh, Kyle Larson and Kurt Busch. Are, we, are you guys saying we're close on fuel to make it to the stage? Yes, sir. It's a wide open mileage. I don't think we'll make it. But the car throttle, I think we've, we've seen a pretty good chance of making it. Everybody's in the same boat here. Jamie? And the one at Kurt Busch was telling his team at the the drop of the green flag. I'm about 75% throttle. Well, with 20 to go in this stage, they told him, we need you to back off a little bit more. Don't push that 42 too much. And then they alerted him that the other Chevys are in the same boat. So to hang on to make it to the end. And, and we see them now. They were up there fighting for the lead a little bit ago, and now they're soft pedaling this thing, trying to make it to the break. Yeah, and those teams on those pit boxes, they can see live data. They can see how much full throttle they're using to calculate that fuel mileage. Well, let's check in on the Fords. How about the Penske team? Mike, right before he was drop kicked out of that high line, Ryan Blaney told his team, I'm not able to save any fuel at all. I am wide open at this point. Wow. Almarola Keslowski, two Fords out front. Four, 11 to go in stage one at Talladega. You'll see it all as we go Fox side by side. Welcome back to the Geico 500 on Fox. Eric Almarola too fast entering the pits. After leading 27 laps, he's going to have to do a drive through penalty at pit road speed, 55 miles an hour, while the rest of the field roars by at 200. Uh, he will go a lap down. Definitely going to go a lap down. Now he came in right with Brad Keselowski. <laughs> Now Marola, the white car. And I'm not sure how much these drivers had an opportunity to practice getting on pit road, but you can see right there, he's yeah. doing everything he can to keep from locking up those tires. Third speeding penalty of the season for Al Marola. All the Penske cars stopped, as did Al Marola on that lap. Martin Truex, the leader, our most recent winner on the short track at Richmond. Here comes Ty Dillon up the outside in his Chevrolet. Second place, David Reagan. Second generation driver from Unadilla, Georgia. He's got a win here. He's got a win at Daytona. He's racing for Shriners Hospital, and he is the last of Bob Jenkins' front row racing cars of three of them that started. He's the last one running. Well, that David has slayed God to Goliath a couple of times at the super speedways like this. And I'm not so sure he had a teammate to help him do it. How about Martin Truex on fuel? Will we be able to make it up leading here? I don't know. I feel like we need to drop back one. Sure how to do that. There's some gaps if we can get out and get back in. Turex trying to drop back a bit, but he is still pushing all the air off the front of his Toyota in the bottom lane as Ty Dillon takes the lead. Well, and with this few laps left in the stage, I'm not sure how much fuel you could really even save if you get back there and try to draft. Ty Dillon, younger of the two brothers, his older brother started from the pole. Ty came into this race an 80 to one shot, but that didn't make him a bad pick. Oh, I think he's a good pick. And he won the stage, I don't know, Richmond a couple weeks ago, and he got so excited. Remember that? Great view from our visor camera here on board, Alex Bowman. But we're talking about Truex and his, his situation. He's got to win. So he can do a little gambling if he wants to. He's jumped into fifth place on the outside. Vince? Well, and David Reagan, who's the first car on that inside line, had previously been behind Martin Truex Jr. on that inside line. They've told Reagan he's a half a lap short, and they need him to save, trying to get to the end with the 38, Matt. Fuel is a concern for the 18 of Kyle Busch. Adam Stevens told him, you need to go into fuel conservation mode, but he's lost a lot of drafting help, punching that big hole. He's dropped all the way to the back of this entire line trying to save fuel. And Mike, listen, they, so folks at home say, well, how are you going to save fuel? If you're not running, you back out of that throttle, you not push it all the way down, you're going to burn less fuel. If you're in it, you can win it. This is Justin Haley. This is his very first start in the NASCAR Cup Series. And he is in the top 10 right now. And he might be celebrating something else today because this is his birthday 20th birthday today and uh, guess who has the fastest lap of the race so far Justin Haley <laughs> <laughs> you know. how about that 
at two Great hundred two miles per hour. Two. <laughs> I found it. <laughs> now Eric Almirola, in addition to the speeding problem, has a speeding issue has what problem, Matt? And DW, what's your famous line when it comes to racing? Don't beat yourself. Exactly. Eric Almirola told his team, "I slid the tires." Entering pit road too hot. I'm just hoping I can make it to the break. Three more laps. Yeah, so what happens, these tires, when you come in like that and you lock one of those tires up, which he probably locked the left front tire, but didn't see the right front, that'll flat spot that tire and possibly cause a vibration and a blown tire. Well, remember we saw him trying to get on pit road and it looked like he was, like the tires were trying to lock up and he was trying to keep them from it. Hey guys, if they don't come to pit road now, they're going to go to the end of the stage because we are now coming to two to go and pit road will be closed. So everybody out there, they've made their bed. They have to run to the end hey, of the stage road. plus wait until they open pit road, Jamie. Austin Dillon in the three is all about stage points. I just asked his crew chief, are you guys good on fuel? He gave me the thumbs up. They are good, but they also told him, be aware of the 88. They told their spotter, if he starts to stumble, put that hand up. Keep your eye on the 88 ahead of you. All right, Larry, as a crew chief, all right, what? you might make it to the end of the stage, but what about when the caution comes out? Are you going to be worried about running out before you can even get on pit road? Absolutely, <laughs> Jeff. With 33 <laughs> degrees of banking, you may see a lot of them down on the apron when this stage ends until they do open pit road. All right, stage points at stake. Kyle Busch in position to get the last one of those. No, Haley in the 77. Ahead of Kyle Busch for 10th. Busch back to 10th. I love it. This is the battle of saving fuel to see who wants to win this stage. Truex might be out. I think they all might be. They're, they're all running on teams. I mean, it's really, really going to be close for these guys. They were on pit road at lap 14 and some at lap 15. They do have the that, first caution flag. They do have that reserve. They have a slight reserve they can switch over to. It, uh, I'm sure most of them are on right now. And you've got one lap. When you most of the time they set that up with about three quarters of a lap. So they they have it planned out of when that thing go, you know cuts out. You flip that switch to that second pump. You, can, you have to come back to pit road. Kligerman and others down on the apron. Apparently, loss of fuel pressure. There's no gas gauge in these cars. Nope. But here we come. Final lap, stage one. And Ty Dillon from Welcome, North Carolina. The Geico Chevy is going to win the stage from Alex Bowman Chevrolet. One, two, three, four with Austin Dillon and Chase Elliott. His second you know, stage win of this season. Looks like about nine cars pitted before pit road was open. They were that close on fuel. They'd rather start tail into the longest line than run out of gas out on the racetrack. So now the pace car brings them around and pit road will be open at the end of stage one. Ty Dillon leading three more Chevrolets to the green and white checkered flag to end the first of three stages. Yeah, Ty and also Austin uh, third in that uh, stage. So nice job. Here's Vince. Alex Bowman coming to pit road in the 88. He's running a little hot and also needs a ticket of help with the balance, but the team elected not to do a chassis adjustment. Instead, it's going to be four tires, and they're going to pull a little tape off the front. Jamie? A sigh of relief for Ty Dillon. They did all they can to win their second stage of the year. Now it's a four-tire stop. They made it around. The others following him in, his brother in the three, Austin Dillon, a four-tire stop. Their goal was to get some stage points, and they did a nice job with that as well. The 12 down and away, too, guys. 50th anniversary for Talladega, where in 1969, the Dillon boys' grandfather, Richard Childress, took his number three out onto the world's fastest speedway to run in the very first Talladega 500, Childress's first cup race. Yes, sir. What do you say we dial up our stage winner there, Ty Dillon? Hey, Ty, this is Jeff up in the Fox Sports booth. You got me? Yeah, buddy, got you again. <laughs> Man, I love talking to you. Every stage wins. I know how excited you were at Bristol. And hey, it, it doesn't come easy, as you know. How difficult was it? You guys were all trying to save fuel, make it to the end of that stage, and also try to win it. Yeah, you know, with our team Chevy partners, we're trying to work together. It's really important for our Camaros to be out front. And uh, well, I get good information about my fuel saving, and, and that was really important there to know when I could go and when I could. Uh, we still didn't know if we were for sure good, but Matt and the guys did a good job. But really proud, proud of my Geico team to win a second stage. That is massive for our team. So. We're pretty pumped about that, and I love talking to you guys, too. All right, man. Well, maybe we'll talk to you some more today. All the best. Thanks. That's the plan. You mentioned Matt. That's Matt Borland, his crew chief. Second stage win of the season 
for the younger of the two Dillon brothers from Welcome, North Carolina. Ty out front. Here in Talladega, 59 laps complete. Here are the fastest pit stops presented by Xfinity. Chase Elliott, one of those first four in stage one. Ricky Stenhouse, Alex Bowman, Ryan Blaney, William Byron were the fast five. Now, we mentioned 10 drivers stopped before pit road was open, so they wouldn't run out of Sunoco race fuel. And here they are. They'll have to go to the end of the longest line when they form up for the restart. Uh, there was one other penalty. Martin Truex was nabbed for too many men over the wall mm. by NASCAR's pit road officiating system. Ready for stage two. As the drivers approach the Geico restart zone, anywhere within that area, the control car can hit the gas and restart the race. If he does not do so by the end of that green zone, the flagman will restart. It is Chase Elliott, and he's on it. When you heard Ty Dillon, when we talked to him on the radio, talked about the Chevrolets working together. That's exactly what he was talking about. That's teammate Chase Elliott to Alex Bowman moves right down in front of him so they can get connected. You got William Byron back there, the three of Austin Dillon, the 13 of Ty Bill Dillon on the outside. So look for those guys to try to get those Chevys lined up along with those Fords down the inside. Yeah, we had all Fords up front for a good part of the early going there, but uh, the Chevys have the Chevys have kind of found their way to the front right now. We'll see how long that lasts. Two lanes now. Three wide behind you. 17's got nothing. You got two Chevys in your mirror. William double wide with you. 17 got the old sucker mirror. hole. The mid is four lanes back with a push. It's such a false sense of momentum that you get and Stenhouse he had it he had a big run and when he tried to go to the outside of Alex Bowman it just came to a halt here come the Penske Fords up the inside Ryan Blaney Joey Logano Stenhouse is going to go with them and so is Stenhouse teammate Ryan Newman yeah and you, you got Keselowski right there as well along with the with the 22 car when you saw Chase Elliott went from that bottom lane all the way to the top lane he knew that the line was moving up top there with William Byron his teammate that allowed Alex Bowman to go around the bottom lane and move right up in front of his teammate Chase Elliott to take the lead. I think Mike by now you've kind of got a sense about what your car will and won't do the, the suck up rate how much room you need. I think you're getting a little more comfortable with what you got Chevy's on the outside Ford's on the inside. Where are the Toyotas Kyle Busch in 10th place is the first of them. He's on the outside lane six cars back. Now during the stage ending caution Eric Almarola got the free pass. He was eligible for it since he'd already served his penalty from earlier. So he's back on the lead lap and he's come from the back up to 14th. And I know Mike you never want to make a mistake in the pitch. You want to have clean stops and, uh, and all those things. But here you get away with a little bit more because you can get back to the front so easily. Larry Mack. Yeah, let's do our Duracell Drive and Trust. This is Eric Almarola's eighth full-time season in the Cup Series and his second at Stuart Haas Racing. In 2018, Eric and his crew chief, Johnny Klossmeyer, won the fall playoff Talladega race, made the playoffs, and finished fifth in the final point standings. Now, Eric's spotter, Joel Edmonds, started spotting for Eric when he was at Richard Petty Motorsports in the 43 car. And at the beginning of 2018, when Eric came to Stuart Haas, Joel made the move with him. I'd say the success that Eric, Johnny, and Joel has had together at Stuart Haas Racing in their first 45 races in that 10 car, it's safe to say Eric Almarola is riding with some solid Duracell driving trust. Absolutely, Larry. He won here last fall. Now, what you're looking at is from the spotter's perch, high above the trioval, and if those cars look tiny, it's because they're almost a mile away entering turn three from the spotter's point of view. You know who else is liking this view that he has right now? That guy in the lead right now, 88, Alex. This is the first laps, I believe, he's led this year. And, you know, I spoke to him on pit road before this race started, and I said, hey, thanks for wearing that visor camera, and he said, I hope you don't see anything in front of me. <laughs> well, and right now, he's wish. getting his wish. Well, Jeff, take us for a lap with Alex Bowman. 
Yeah, so right here, you know, when you're out front now, it's a little bit different when you've got your teammate behind you, but watch the little movement of his head. Every time his head moves to the right a little bit, that's him looking in his mirror to see what's happening behind him. Is a second lane forming? Of course, right now, it's a, this is a good time to, to take a breath because things are pretty calm. You got two of your teammates right behind you. You got the Chevys lined up. This is the place you want to be and the calm before the storm. Just holding a nice wheel there, you know, wide open. You hear that RPM not changing a whole lot. He's not getting what we talked about, that closing rate, because he's leading this field right now. How much does it help that he has his two teammates directly in line behind him? Well, it makes you more comfortable. You know that they're going to not do anything to mess you up, which if it was a competitor, you never are sure. Feel pretty confident with your teammate right behind you, particularly somebody like Chase Elliott, who is a pretty, guy, pretty conservative guy on the racetrack. I know you guys had a lot of fun Friday night on the boulevard, but seeing these cars flying around Talladega makes me want to do one thing. Oh, yeah. Crank, Crank it, it up. up. We don't have a teammate behind us, so we don't want to try and go up all that outside line. The 19 will go underneath us, so we just stay on the bottom. Don't worry about that outside lane. Brad Keselowski brought the Fords of Eric Almarola, Joey Logano, and David Reagan around the outside to the lead. 68 laps complete at Talladega, and that number 10 of Almarola was the free pass car last caution. Now he's up in the top three. While you enjoy the race on Fox, a great second screen experience, the Hot Pass Hangout on FS Go, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Caffeine. Join Michael Waltrip, Caitlin Vinci, and Regan Smith. Joey Logano has got to the lead, and here comes David Reagan on him. And Brad Kozlowski to the inside, and yeah. Kyle Busch in the 18. I was going to say, unfortunately, David Reagan didn't have anybody no, to go no, with him no. on that move, so I don't know how well that's going to work out. Luckily, he picked up Kyle Busch. I, well, I don't think that was a good idea for David. But he's got a great race car, I'll tell you that. Reagan in the 38. You know, when you talk about guys that are good on these super speedways, look at Joey Legal in the 22 car. Runs, he knows that that run's coming. Probably T.J. Majors, his spotter, told him. He's looking his mirror. He goes down and blocks that lane that Kyle Busch had all that speed and momentum. And once you get that momentum, just ride it as long as you can. And that's why he actually has such a run on his teammate, Brad Keselowski. He just goes right on by him. Logano will come by to lead lap 73 by about three feet over Reagan from Keselowski. Now, here's what Joey was talking about before he went to the lead. We get there as good as anybody. That's one thing, you get the thing in the lead. You get a couple cars behind you that can commit, like when he did, do it. Uh-oh. Yeah, you saw right there, uh -oh. the 10 car of Eric Almirola was right on the rear bumper of the two, Brad Keselowski. That opened the door 
for Alex Bowman to get to the inside of him and take him three wide. Well, friends are where you find them. Kyle Busch is the only Toyota in the front five, but looks like he's found a friend with David Reagan. Oh, never mind. Yeah, Reagan drops down. He with might Ryan have thought he was his friend, but not for long. That's all right. He's got the best pusher he can have right behind him. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. going to push Kyle Busch to the lead right here. Uh -oh. oh, no, David uh -oh. Reagan caught in the middle. Better get up there behind that 20 car quick. Well, he's going to get some help from Eric Almirola. See if they can work their way back up. And that's how quickly you go from first to 11th. But you can go from 15th or 11th up to first pretty quick, too. Yeah, that's what I've seen with this package. You do fall back, but you can pull back up. How about that third car on the outside, Martin Truex, Matt? Mike, quick recovery for the 19 of Truax. Remember, he pitted early at the end of that stage before pit road was open because he was out of fuel. Then he had the issue while the car was being serviced. A crew member went to reach for a tire. His hand hit the concrete. There was the penalty. His concern now, though, fuel. He told Cole Pern under that caution, I don't know how else I could have saved more. I was doing all I could. So that could be a concern for later in the race as well. I think that's a, kind of an unknown. And uh, Larry, we had talked about this about the fuel mileage with this package, this engine. And what do you what do you what do you know about that, Larry? Well, what I do know, Daryl, is you look right here. The window is open. We may see them start to come to pit road. You can pit now and make it to the end of this stage. So I'd start watching for some drivers possibly hitting pit road here in the next lap or two. Well, I tell you, somebody that I was worried was going to be hitting something other than pit road. That's Kyle Busch coming down that back straightaway. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. all over the rear bumper trying to give him a big push to get to the lead. Watch this. You get there's a gap now between the 18 and Kyle Busch on that outside lane. Now here comes Ricky Stenhouse Jr. You want to push on that outer edge. But if that car moves at all and right there, I mean, that was a big moment for Kyle Busch as Ricky Stenhouse Jr. got to that rear bumper. Kyle Busch may be the only guy that could hang on to that car under those conditions because that was it was out of control, really. What did that do for Kyle Busch? Sent him right to the lead. <laughs> he is getting two-timed on both sides by the Fords, a Blaney on the inside, Stenhouse on the outside. And this is what we were hoping for today. We saw this in practice. They were three wide. Nobody was content by just riding along. Right now, they're not worried about fuel mileage or anything else. They just want to get the lead. I just think this is what we were, I think it took some laps in the race for everybody to figure out what they had because this is so new and now they know what they've got and they become a little bit more comfortable with it and a lot more aggressive. Well, we've had more lead changes already today than in the entire 500 miles last fall. Well, yeah, that's because Kurt Busch led pretty much every lap except for the last one. This is it, Mike. This is so intense. And we talked about this, Jeff and I have, and I think you too. This is mental. This is not physical. It's easy to drive these cars around this racetrack. Mentally, though, it wears you out. Joey Logano in the 22. He was at the next table at dinner last night. I said, what do you think? He says, I think you're going to see an entertaining race. And you'll see it all as we go Fox side by side. Hollow Branch, Mississippi's Ricky Stenhouse is the first of five Fords in front. 81 laps into the Geico 500 at Talladega. 26 laps complete. We're almost halfway through stage two. I love Brian Petty, Ricky Stenhouse Jr.'s crew chief. He and they, they go together. They, they both are going to do everything in their power to win this race, whatever it, and Ricky Stenhouse, a whatever it takes driver. Petty is a whatever it takes crew chief. When Stenhouse is also a guy, he's not content being second, third, fourth, or fifth. He wants to be leading. A lot of action on pit road about halfway through this stage. Vince. The 42 of Kyle Larson coming to pit road. Larson's been uh, dealing with a little bit loose race car. It's going to be gas only, Matt. And it's going to be fuel only for the 24 of William Byron. All the Chevrolets on pit road topping off. Jamie. Austin Dillon in the three right now. Chase Elliott, nice recovery. Little time, no tires there for the three or the 13. They go off pit road altogether. We talked at the top of the day about all the manufacturers each having their own agendas, and Chevrolet has just shown their hand. Well, and if it's a race of numbers, Mike, that was 11 Chevrolets that just came together. If they can keep those Chevrolets together, that's going to be very powerful. I, I tell you, I can't imagine that you can't get the guys. They have seen the benefits in races past 
uh, working together. And I think you gotta you gotta remember that when you get into these races. 27 laps to go in stage two. Here's a quick word from Duracell. This is the number one trusted brand. Ford's out front, four of them before Kyle Busch's number 18 Toyota. He also has Eric Jones and Martin Truex as teammates. Only two Chevrolets in the top 20, rookie Justin Haley and Brendan Gone in the top 15. Then further back, the cars that pitted. And Mike, remember, that we, not, we don't have a restrictor plate here now. We have a tapered spacer. We don't have 400 horsepower. We have 550 horsepower. We don't have a three-inch spoiler. We got a nine-inch spoiler. Everything about today's race is different than what we've ever had here before. That's why these crew chiefs and drivers have to make adjustments on the fly. So we go from the lead pack to the cars that pitted moments ago, that group of uh, 10 or more Chevrolets that all came in, stayed on the lead lap with a fuel-only stop. Larry, tire wear, not much of a concern here. Yeah, it really isn't, Mike, but those Fords that, that's not pitted, they'll have to come somewhere around lap 90, which would be 20 to go in the stage if they're going to make this full fuel run. But, yeah, I would say just like you saw the Chevrolet's that pitted, Mike, no tires, fuel only. And then, Mike, I think a lot of these guys thought we might see a crash fest today. Because of what we saw in practice and what the unknowns of the race today, I think a lot of guys were expecting a whole lot more caution than what we've seen so far. And I think what you'll see them do, just like Larry McReynolds was talking about, no no tires fuel, but under those cautions, at those stage ends, if they do come on pit road under a caution, you'll see them put four tires on, or at least two. I think there's a lot of elements of this race that's like any other race we've ever had here, Mike. It's just all the factors that go around the cars and the difference in the car this time than what we've had here in the past. Strategy, fuel, positioning, I think those are all about the same. Denny Hamlin coming in. He had damage from the crash back on lap 11. Ten car lead draft at Talladega. And counting the cars that have already stopped, 26 cars on the lead lap in position maybe to win it. The Geico 500 on Fox is sponsored by Monster Energy, official sponsor of NASCAR. 21 laps to go in stage two at Talladega. Of the 10 Chevrolets that pitted, eight are still on the lead lap running about 15 seconds in front of the leaders. Ricky Stenhouse in the 17. There is that group. Two of those Chevys have gone a lap down. Teammates Chris Busher and Ryan Priest could not pick up the draft of the other Chevys coming off the pits. So they're in this pack with the leaders. That includes all the Fords and Toyotas that have not yet pitted in stage two. That stat right there shows you why Ricky Stenhouse Jr. loves these big racetracks. The highest running Toyota in that pack is seventh place Kyle Busch. Matt. Mike, gamesmanship and planning takes place throughout the entire run. Kyle Busch, a few moments ago, a little frustrated at this juncture. How the hell did we have three teammates in a row and we couldn't charge through there? I could pick them off one by one if we all just got together. Stayed in line. Yeah, Tenfold working on it. <laughs> That's my favorite thing. Yep, Tenfold working on it. All right, there. Uh, looks like, yes, yeah, some pit stops coming from the Fords and one of the Toyotas. The leaders come to pit road. Kyle Busch picks up the lead in this race. Vince. The two of uh, Brad Keselowski and, and you see gas only, also making sure that grill is clean. Just gas and go, man. It's going to be fuel only for Ryan Blaney in the 12. Lackey has her full. Still waiting. Finally, he's away. The 19 of Martin Truex Jr. pulls around the Gaunt Brothers 96. He topped off as well. Jamie. Joey Logano in the 22 said he got a little bit loose. Right side tires is the call, and they'll top him up with fuel. Oh, close, close call with Clip Boyer. Boyer having to back up to get into his stall, as Jamie pointed out. And also, Daniel Suarez had a very near miss. About bottle cap thick there on pit road, trying to get into his pit. Vince? 
The 20 of Eric Jones has been uh, spent much of the day out toward the front group, the chassis adjustment and gas for the 20 of Eric Jones, Matt. Those Toyotas are on pit road fuel only for the 18 of Bush, and he's away. Matt Benedetto finishes up his fuel stop. There's uh, Stanton Barrett's 52 getting serviced. And back into the fray. So as things cycle around, hey, look at my buddy. Leader. Look at him go. And it, it, Mike, he is up on the wheel too, buddy. Rookie Ryan Priest out of the modified division, giving us good ride with that Kroger on board camera. Here we go with Stenhouse around the outside of Kyle Busch. Eric Almirola in the mix there with Martin Truex. Truex made a nice move there, Mike. He knew the 10 was underneath him, and he knew he had to give him some room. Close call here on pit road. Daniel Suarez coming in. Whoa. Ryan Newman coming out. And here's the other one as Joey Logano was done. And Clint Boyer didn't quite know that. Boy, he what? really cut Logano a break there. <laughs> what a heads up move by Clint Boyer to avoid Joey Logano there. Hey, uh, you want to, hey, watch this moment. <laughs> All right. Hey, watch this. <laughs> Chase Elliott, the nine. Let's see, he's getting that big toe. The 17 of Ricky Ooh. Stenhouse Jr. tries to squeeze and put the block on Chase Elliott, but. You know what you call that? Taking it to the limit. He took him right up there as far as he felt he could, and he had to let him go. If he had taken it another inch, I can tell you that would have been a lot different. Chase Elliott, whose dad holds the all-time NASCAR qualifying speed record set right here, is now out in front of the Geico 500. 16 laps to go, stage two. Thirteen laps to go in stage two. Let's go three wide, sponsored by John Deere. Chase Elliott, your leader on the left, watching Joey Logano and Eric Jones fight for 10th in the middle. And your stage one winner, Ty Dillon, has worked his way up into sixth, part of a seven-car Chevrolet train at the front. What's that song? Why don't you just meet me in the middle? <laughs> Look at that huge run <laughs> at outside lane. Manufactured right there, lead, led by the 10 of Eric Almirola. Oh, they looked like they were doing five miles per hour faster than the, the eight of uh, Daniel Hemrick there on the inside lane. 10 car is pretty steamy, my friend. Looks like it handles well, it's running fast. And, and you know, that to me, these guys up front here right now, those Chevrolets on the inside lane, they've seen this happen before. I think they should start moving to that outside lane and blocking those Fords that are about to come to their outside. Well, remember what I told you a little bit ago? Uh, uh, Jamie, go ahead. I just wanted to add on the nine of Chase Elliott, who's leading. I talked to Alan Gustafson, his crew chief, this morning, and he said, you know, we had these manufacturer meetings, about four of them this weekend. He said, I've been part of that before where Chevrolet wants us to get together, and they end up being a mess. He said, I'm very confident in what we're planning here today and getting all of the teams, all 18 cars on board. So they're working their way up front. And meanwhile, the nine, by the way, guys, he overcame a pit road speeding penalty, an issue when he fell off the jack, and now he's leading this race with a good car. Yeah, it Jamie, I think what's a little discouraging if I'm Chevy guys is the Ford guys seem to be able to drive by them. They're all down the bottom, kind of single file working together. And here comes Almirola and, and uh, Joy Logano and, and, and Kieslowski, and they just seem to be able to drive up and take the lead. Well, if they're going to come by me, they're going to have to go by me on the inside because I'm going to block that outside lane before they ever get there. They don't seem to be willing to move up. I well, they've like broken you. up a little bit here. The 10 of Amarola broke away from some of those other Fords, and now he's trailing those Chevrolets. So we'll see what he can do if he doesn't have that help. Well, he's not going to get any help from Ty Dillon or Daniel Hemrick in the Chevys. 
the 13 and the 8. No, the first and his other Fords, Stenhouse, the blue car, 17 there, too far back to help. The yeah. first thing they're going to want to try to do is shuffle that 10 car right out of that line. I know, it because I tell you, that 10 car, Elmer, he is a crafty dude now, I'm telling you. With the fast race car. Ten laps to go in stage two. Lap 101 complete at Talladega. Chase Elliott out front, side by side. 19 cars in the lead draft at Talladega, about the first dozen single file, and then it's still on as they jockey for position, closing in on the end of stage two. Six laps from now. Hendrick Motorsports out front, one, two, three. Uh, Jimmy Johnson ran over a piece of debris early, cut a right front tire, hit the wall. Still running, but 10 laps down. And Mike, one thing I haven't seen today, and I thought I would, actually, no tandem drafting. Not I, yet. I, I thought we would see some guys hook up and push each other, but I'm not sure the cars are handling well enough to do that. Would you get back to me with about three laps to yes. go? Uh, if there's I, a I'm, caution. I see the bumping, and, I, and that seemed to have worked pretty well, but I have not seen two cars just hook up and take off and pass everybody. And, and I agree. I just don't think they're driving good enough I to be able to do so it. Either. But they will do it if it's for the win in, good point. One, in a one-lap shootout. So here come the Fords on the outside. Ryan Blaney trying to get a little side draft to get something going as these Fords try to inhale the command Camaros that lead this race. Matt. Mike, we told you at the top of the show, the Fords trying to work together if they can, but at times you're going to have to be the Lone Ranger. Blaney has lost his Team Penske teammates. At one point, frustration said, and he said, I quote, I can't babysit my teammates any longer. He's on the outside at the point there. Well, and, and <laughs> so if you go back over That's the last funny. about four or five years, Toyota they were the most organized at Daytona. They won the Daytona 500, and the Ford camp said, hey, guys, let's take a look at this. They started working together. All of a sudden, they started setting the standard, and then Chevrolet took a look at it and said, guys, we've got to figure this out. And right now, they're doing it the best because they've got them all lined up right around the bottom. But don't well, you think it's kind of ironic that Ryan Blaney says he can't babysit his teammates? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's the youngest of the three drivers on that team. All right, we mentioned Jimmy Johnson. Out of the race from the lap 11 crash, Bubba Wallace, Kevin Harvick, uh, Matt Tift, Michael McDowell, and much later in the race, still with uh, damage, camber damage from that accident, Denny Hamlin uh, has also gone to the garage. Johnson 10 laps down. Clint Boyer was in that one. He is six laps down. Uh, Stanton Barrett, Cody Ware, Parker Kligerman also multiple laps back, but we still have 26 cars on the lead lap. Yeah, that 12 car, Blaney, though, he keeps working it, man. He gets down that door, tries to get a little side grab, shoots back out. He's got Elmer rolling behind him, pushing him a little bit. They might get up there. You can almost hear Ty Dillon have to get out of the throttle a tiny bit right there, and that's when Ryan Blaney really lunged ahead of him. I, I think handling, when you're on that bottom lane like this and those cars are side dropping you on the outside, Right on him. It can definitely take the handling away. Well, remember, Jeff, they just came and got fuel. They to the topped line. up with fuel. They didn't put tires on the One off and one behind him. One off and one behind him. Two more. Two laps to go in stage two, so pit lane is officially closed. Ooh, contact Ooh. there. Ricky Stenhouse just got a bump. Was that Kurt Busch on well, the inside? Well, I, I think, think it was. I think Stenhouse got a little bit loose right there. Looks I like some of those too. boards are a little free on the outside. I've seen that happen up to 42 of uh, Larson. I saw him get sideways off the corner. These cars are right on the verge of being spun out. And something also happened to Ty Dillon, and that sort of broke up a little bit of the momentum and, and made some of these cars have to fan out. Almirola is 10th in the number 10. Trying to get the last stage point just ahead of Logano. There's it. Almirola, who has led the most laps today, 27. Don't tell Eric, but in the last 18 races at Talladega, the driver who led the most lap only won three times. He didn't have to be one of them, was he? He sure. <laughs> <laughs> no. he, listen, he knows how to lead one lap, yeah. the, the most important one. I think one thing, these guys are glad this stayed it over with because they need tires. It's not over yet. <laughs> Chase Elliott trying to become only the fourth Chevy driver to win a stage in 2019. Ty Dillon now has two, Kyle Larson one. Look at this huge just, run coming from Blaney. Hang on, hang on. Kurt Busch got to the outside, got some help from his brother Kyle Busch, and that whole lane started really forming and moving forward. Starter has the green and white checkers in hand. Stage two comes to an end right now. Chase Elliott 
coming to the flag, leading Alex Bowman and William Byron. Hendrick Chevy's one, two, three. Ooh, that was pretty uh, intense. Good job, car temp. <laughs> Spotter was excited. No, oh, that was <laughs> Alan Gessler. Or was that Alan? <laughs> Chase Elliott gets his first stage win of the season. Yeah! Two stages complete, 77 laps to go. There's your second stage winner. Chase Elliott picking up his first stage win of the season and the fourth for Chevrolet. This fall, Fox becomes the new network home of WWE's SmackDown Live. Catch all the action every Friday night beginning October 4th, only on Fox. Were it not copyrighted, SmackDown Live would be a good title for what we're about to see in Stage 3. I definitely think so. I mean, it just seems like their intensity at the end of these stages and as we get closer to the end of this race is only going to ramp up. Let's have a look at how the Coca-Cola family of drivers are faring here at the end of stage two. That ends with uh, seven Chevrolets in the top eight. Austin Dillon currently fifth. Kyle Larson in that group. Joey Logano, Ryan Newman. Daniel Suarez on the lead lap in 24th. Denny Hamlin and Bubba Wallace in the garage. Yeah, I know it. I know it's uh, we're at a stage break now, but that's got to be so encouraging to the Hendrick Motorsports guys. I mean, to have three cars, one, two, three, run as well as they are right now, that's pretty encouraging for those guys. Yeah, I think uh, for Chase Elliott, too, what's encouraging is the last time he won stage two, he went on to win the race at Watkins Glen. Field working his way around turn four at caution speed, and the green light is on at the head end of Pit Road. Let's go to the Ball State University Alumnus of the Year, Vince Welch. Well, what a billing. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Alex Bowman coming to Pit Road celebrated his 26th birthday on Thursday hopes to celebrate his first career win a little bit later today really likes the car pitting from second place a little bit tight four tires and gas Matt and Blaney's car a little on the tight side a slight air pressure change concern on the 24 of William Byron missing the left front corner hook pin but the bigger concern about the fuel pressure it was surging coming down the back stretch he had to flip the switch Jamie Chase Elliott in the nine you see the damage there on the left front but the car has been good balance good this team's fired up they got their first stage win of the year here's your Sunoco race off pit road Elliott and Bowman just the way they came in and Kyle Larson, Kyle Busch, and pole sitter Austin Dillon. Style up our stage two winner. Hey, Chase, this is Jeff up in the booth. You got me? Jeff, go ahead. Well, buddy, you've had to overcome a few things on pit road, but your pit crew's doing a pretty awesome job getting you out first there. And your Chevy teammates, man, you guys have been working really well together. What is it going to take to keep that number nine car up front to get this win? Yeah, guys, done a good job today. Uh, just trying to be smart. I think it's going to change a little bit as the day goes along, for sure. It's not going to be quite like what we saw right there, I don't think. So we'll do what we got. Well, all right, man. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Appreciate it, guys. NASCAR's most popular driver grabs the stage two win. 75 laps to go at the world's fastest speedway. I'm here doing this pro for new orange vanilla coke. Then who is driving my car? If you're watching NASCAR on Fox. Getting ready for green flag in stage three. There's a look at Daniel Suarez. Our favorite segment on NASCAR Race Hub on FS1 Monday through Thursday evenings is radioactive. Today we're radioactive with Daniel. In football, they say defense wins championships. We'll see if that holds true here today. Get a coffee, me, Daniel. Hey, amigos. Daniel Suarez here. Don't be afraid to tell me what you're thinking. You know, just think you're on the same page there. Oh, for sure, man. I will let you know. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing, boys, and please be nice to each other. 
Stay up there. Stay up, stay up, stay up. They're wrecking behind you. Keep digging. Cars are behind you. I'll wreck behind you. Go, go, go. So we cycle through to Joey Logano and Daniel Suarez to restart on the front row. Green flag, green flag. Bottom line is tight. 20's trying to get to you. Got no help here, no help. Two inside, two inside. Keep digging, keep digging. Green checker at the line, green checker. Engine off, engine off, engine off. Well, that's a listen to some of Daniel Suarez's day. As we get ready for stage three, they will take the green flag with 72 laps to go. They're double file out of turn number four. Larry Mack tells us that is right on the cusp of making this a one-stop race if things go well. Here they come to the Geico restart zone. Nice crowd at Talladega. Sun back out. And Chase Elliott will hit the gas and put us under the green for stage three. four maybe five cars will break free but again Mike that was those Chevrolet Clear. cars they've been watching what these other guys have been doing at these super speedways right. by even on the restarts finding these gaps and holes to get lined up yeah it was a great restart Whoa. Oh, goodness gracious Kyle speed. Busch just got moved oh my goodness boy that was another big moment by Kyle Busch great job driving that car keeping it going and really didn't even lose much yeah that car control and those quick hands of Kyle Busch is all it saved that one because it, it was it was out of control Keselowski was still pushing as they came past the start finish line Watch here's this. a look at it and see, if you get to that left rear of the bumper that's one of the things that can really loosen up these race cars I think that's what it was actually Keselowski did a pretty nice job slowing the momentum down before he got to the rear bumper of the 18 just wanted to give him a little nudge but boy it's still enough to get 18 car a little bit out of shape. See, that's a different than you and me. That won't no little rub. That was a pretty big, a big show right there. Stenhouse in the blue 17 drops to the middle. Don't you love those shots? I mean, I, I know that looks crazy, but that's what it feels like in the race car. <laughs> yeah, that camera is mounted firmly. That is how stiffly sprung and suspended these cars are. Well, it's how unfirm the rear bumpers mounted, I believe. It might, it might be a slight exaggeration, but it's still a pretty bumpy ride. These are race cars. They're not street cars. What's that old line? Not built for comfort. <laughs> built for speed. <laughs> now, we saw that moment by the 18 of Kyle Busch having that moment, and, and he knew that those Fords were not going to be friendly to him. They shuffled him out. Look at this now. He's gone all the way to the back. And you go back there and catch your breath. Even Kyle Busch has to do that. Back there with uh, Jeffrey Earnhardt, who got the free pass at the end of stage two. And he might and go Ross back Chastain. there. Might go back there and save some fuel. Might not be a bad idea. Yeah, there's a lot. This is the stage of the race, Jeff, as you well know. A lot goes on thinking about getting to the end. And a lot of these drivers might know this is also when a lot of intensity picks up. We're running out of laps. We got 69 laps to go. Now you start positioning yourself, thinking about what am I going to do when we get to the end of this race? Let's uh, catch up with Ty Dillon, our stage one winner, Jamie. Well, the end of that last run, he was saying how loose he was. Well, when they came in and they took the tires off, the left rear had a slow leak. He was down to three pounds of pressure. Wow. They put new tires on, brought it back in, Mike, and did make a big wedge adjustment to help the handle. Wow. Well, that explains did you see Kyle Busch sail on past? <laughs> yeah, My gosh. Maybe he hasn't decided to save fuel in the back. Well, he got a big push from Matt Benedetto, And uh, Matt has the fastest lap of this race with his uh, Levine family racing 95, and he gave Kyle a big push past those other cars. And look right there, what does he have in common? He's got two other Toyotas around him. Unfortunately, he lost his Toyota teammate of Denny Hamlin, so if they can get the 20 of Eric Jones together, that's uh, that's gonna be four Toyotas that they're gonna wanna work with. Yeah, that Mike, Mike Wheeler, he, he worked over there with the with the Kyle and those guys, with Denny Hamlin, so he kinda got a good relationship 
And uh, he might be willing to help Kyle get back to the front. The problem with the front is it's all Chevrolet on the inside. Those first six cars on the inside lane back to the red number three of Austin Dillon are all Camaros. Yeah, we saw earlier in the day when the 10, I believe it's the 10 car of Eric Almirola was leading that outside lane. He was able to drive all the way by those Chevrolets and take the lead. But right now that outside lane led by Blaney, not able to make up that much ground yet. Oh, I think they'll get there. They're pushing each other. Kyle Larson having a great run here. His green Camaro is third. Vince. Boy, and it's interesting because this is a team that if there's any bad luck to have been had, they have had it this season. And I joked with Crew Chief Chad Johnson before the race about wouldn't it be something the place where most people have bad luck, maybe this is where you turn it around. He said, we'll take anything we can get. And right now they've had a really good race car. Kyle says it's a little different depending on who's running around him and where, but otherwise no changes on that last stop. They like where they're at. Yeah, ben, I have seen the, the 42 car out of shape a couple of times, but nothing, nothing serious. Yes. How can you not have good luck with the four leaf clover on your car? Chase Elliott has led since the end of stage two, 66 laps to go. <laughs> 62 laps to go at Talladega. That second group keeps working its way to the front, as you see from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Win your battles, earn your name. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Pretty interesting battle, Mike. That's all the Chevys down on the bottom, all the Fords up on the outside. The 12 car will get it. He will get almost up to the uh, car, the 24 car, William Byron. And it seems like he stalls out there and falls back a little bit, but it's up and back, up and back. Well, now, in past races at Talladega, we're used to seeing the lead pack of the cars right up around the wall on the outside. Uh, Jamie McMurray, you were in this race last year. How does this look different? Well, I mean, it's almost the opposite, right? Like, the guys are running right around the yellow line, and every time the outside lane gets a little bit of momentum built up, someone five or six rows back in that lane makes it three wide and they lose all their momentum and it has to start over again. The Chevys have done a great job though at, in the last stage when those guys made their green flag pit stop they short pitted they came out single file and they were able to finish in the top three so they're doing a good job now but I can't wait to see what happens when we get down to the end of it and if all those guys still listen. Hey Jamie are you surprised just how committed those Chevys are on the bottom lane every time we see those sports get lined up and build a momentum on the outside lane you know typically somebody would jump to the outside try to block that momentum but those guys seem to be really committed to being lined up on the bottom. Yeah, but I think as you get closer to the end, it's going to be so hard to stay committed to the bottom lane. Um, but it's worked for them up to this point. I've seen a couple of guys want to pull out and then pull back in in line. Um, but it's working for them right now, and we'll just have to wait and see what happens when we get down to the end. You know, something I, I think may be affecting this, uh, in the low line, high line, is the air ducts in the front of the car. Those two big black holes under the, under the headlight doors. You're putting air out of the car, and this big rear spoiler if you're on the outside, you're getting a lot of air coming out of that car and that's down the bottom. That's hitting the front of your car and slowing you down. That could have an effect on that outside line. Well, that's the wisdom of 12 Talladega victories between the three of you. Looking at how this shakes out. So we have five Chevys up front, then Eric Jones Toyota, Ryan Blaney's Ford on the outside, and Kyle Busch, well, he's not in the picture right now, Matt. Mike, through the years, you've seen maybe a pair of drivers with different manufacturers team up in their cars, just aerodynamically work better together for some reason, but not the case for Kyle Busch. In fact, he made the observation to his spotter, Tony Hirschman III, for some reason, when the two-car of Keselowski got to his bumper it just really slowed him down and Hirschman replied that he saw the same thing when Keselowski was tucked up underneath the 22 of Logano. Some some people play better with others. Some, some cars play, play well better with all. others. Yeah. yeah. Well somebody that wasn't playing nice shuffled the three car pole sitter of Austin Dillon to the back. He was lined up with all those Chevrolets up front there. And something happened where he got stuck in the middle and went all the way to the back. Jamie? 
Well, Austin had some damage earlier, and they put some bare bond on the deck lid, the back end of that race car. Richard Childress, his grandfather, is watching through binoculars and said he saw something black fly out of the back of the car. They don't know if it is the bare bond, but Austin said the sensation of the car has changed. He doesn't know if it's that or if it's a tire going down, so he got out of the draft and fell to the back. And he dropped from 6th to 25th. Coming to the stripe with 57 laps to go. Chase Elliott and his Chevrolet buddies still out front. 56 laps to go. We're under caution for debris at Talladega. Pit road will open. And so we're looking at a two-stop race to get to lap 188 and the checkered flag. Five Chevrolets out front, then Eric Jones, Toyota, Ryan Blaney's Ford, Hemrick, Kozlowski, Busher are the top 10. 28 cars are on the lead lap, and Reed Sorensen will get the free pass and be back on the lead lap after this caution. Pit Road, Vince. The 88 of Alex Bowman coming down, and it has been a really good day today for this 88 team. No mistakes here. They've asked Alex to stop short in the box so he can uh, have a clean entry out. And for the 42 of Kyle Larson, they haven't made a change of the car since the first stop of the day. Just four tires and gas again here, Matt. Oh. An issue with the 12 car leaving, he hit his tire, they got it back. The 24 car of Byron, his service is complete, but they're gonna have to pit at about lap 170 to 171, Jamie. Chase Elliott in the nine, led 38 laps so far today. Car has been good, quiet on the radio, a four tire stop and he's out. There's your race off pit road, Eric Jones picks up five spots. When Fox Sports began, Gary Lang was an integral part of the look and feel of Fox Sports' attitude. He tragically passed away last week. And we want to play a piece for you to show you the genius of Gary Lang. This is from Fox Sports at Talladega, 2001. I'm a traveling man and I'm a lot of stops all over the world. Getting ready for the restart with 53 laps to go. At least one more pit stop in Talladega. Now, here's today's Credit One Bank ones to watch. Well, Mike, it's no secret that those Hendrick Chevrolets have not gotten off to a stellar start. But here today, those Chevrolet teams are working to better, better than any others out there. Chase Elliott finished third here a year ago. Watch him go maybe get that first Talladega win. Yeah, Jeff, Ford has won seven consecutive races here. I know the Chevrolet camp, they've been flexing those muscles, but when it's all said and done, Brad Keselowski will give Ford their eighth consecutive. Oh, no. Look, he says two. I said, uh-uh. 22. Joy Logano's won three of the last seven races here. You're going to have to get aggressive, and you're going to have to tick some people off. My guy's good at that. I think you're all wrong, DW. I'm going with the 12 of Ryan Blaney. He's taken quicker to drafting than most young drivers. He finished second in the 500 two years ago. He says he just doesn't think his car is that good out front, but his crew chief, Jeremy Bullen, says, I just think you're too hard on yourself. Eric Almirola has two wins at NASCAR's top level. They both come on the sport's biggest tracks. He's led 27 laps today. He only needs to lead one more, just like last fall, the last lap. Or you can put all the car numbers in a bucket and just reach in and pull one out, because here we go. We'll restart with 52 laps to go and 29 cars on the lead lap. Eric Jones, Toyota, Ryan Blaney, Ford up front. Here we go. Hey, you know, we don't want to overlook that Jones boy either because, you know, he had a great finish at Daytona, and he's a pretty good super speedway racer in and of itself. A little bit of different strategy here. Some teams took two tires. Some teams took no tires. Some took four. 
what would have been your preference at this stage in the race, Jeff? I like any time you come in under caution, I want four tires. Under green, I want no tires. Yeah, four Darryl? tires. You got to have four tires. That way you can maneuver. You can move around. You got grip. Give me four tires now. Yeah, because on these restarts, we've seen just how wild and crazy it gets. I think like now. He's going three wide with his teammate. Middle three. Oh, I'm not sure that was planned well. I think somebody sent the message to uh, Keselowski of what Blaney said about his teammates Whoa. earlier. That is going to hurt those guys a bunch. Look at how quickly the pack caught up to them in the middle and outside lanes. Four wide we are. That didn't work well for DiBenedetto in the 95. No, he I, had no help. That was a bad move by Blaney, uh, and it really hurt him, Keselowski, a lot. He, Blaney's able to fall back here and pick up Ricky Stenhouse Jr. That will help him maybe get back up every boy. Keselowski is way back. Well, I don't, yeah, Blaney was riding along there, and, and for whatever reason, Keselowski get, had a big run and decided to try to go to the outside, make it three wide on his teammate. There here comes I, a push here from I come. Stenhouse, of course. Here I come. That's what I said about earlier. These fours are it kind of demoralizing because when they get a run, man, they can go by a lot of cars. Now, from that situation, here's some radio from Ryan Blaney's team. Tell me if the two is clear, not a five clear. That he never was clear. Just him there. Eight back to your help. <laughs> That's how you handle that. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of feel like there's a little Alabama slamma coming here. There's something that just didn't feel right. Nope. <laughs> well, we talked about that intensity ramping up. Frustration can ramp up too. Well, right now, drivers up uh, in that top three have won three of the last four super speedway races, all but this year's Daytona 500, won by Denny Hamlin, who's in the garage. And Mike, and Mike again, we talked about this. It's not terribly physical here. But it is terribly mentally draining. Your head starts hurting, and making those quick decisions is hard to do as you get near the end of the race. Well, that's what happened right there. That, yeah, ten of Eric, Eric Almarola got shuffled out there somehow. He's stuck in the middle. And Kyle Busch changed lanes and latched onto his teammate Eric Jones. The 20 and the 18 hookup. It's the Penske Fords against the Gibbs Toyotas. And right with him is that Roush Fenway Ford, the 17 of Ricky Stenhouse, Vince. Well, and he came from the back, remember, started at the rear, and he's had the same issue all day long. The car has just been too loose. They haven't quite hit that sweet spot with the balance yet, but you see Stenhouse going to the outside, trying to make the run. This is a critically important race for them. They started the day outside the playoff picture. They feel like these super speedway races are their chances to win, and if they're going to make the playoffs, they got to capitalize, and they knew that coming in here today four Ooh, wide four again. Wide. and Mike this is what I was saying this is why I want four tires when it gets this crazy on these restarts and you're three and four wide you want a car that has some more grip underneath you to be able to maneuver and go from that top lane to the bottom lane now that time the Fords wanted nothing to do with Kyle Busch they locked him out pushed him back to 10 but what I look, look Ricky Stenhouse up here he doesn't like his car it's not handling very good but he's what? leading the race <laughs> <laughs> Matthew Benedetto's worked his way up into that front pack. Jamie. And he's one of those drivers in the 95 that didn't take tires on the last stop. Talked to him before he got in the car. After his run at Daytona, Mike, remember, he led a handful of laps, got his confidence up. Unfortunately, he wrecked. He said today he feels like it's the best shot at a win. Right now, he's in a, in a good spot, that's for sure. Now, how about Paul Menard, who fell to the very tail of the lead draft about 30 laps ago? Here's Menard for the Wood Brothers in second place, Matt. Mike, and that's where he finished 11 years ago here at Talladega. They made a lot of adjustments to that race car. Three significant changes. Remember, the Wood Brothers, they're chasing their 100th win. Menard would love to be that guy to do it. And how many races did you say we've been here at Talladega, Mike? <laughs> this is the 100th. Well, Chris Buescher's trying to make something happen, too, right up here in this pack. Wow, two by two, and neither lane seems to have an edge. Uh, Bobby Labonte, these seem like the desperate hours right here. Yeah, it really does. And I know I was always wanting my spotter to give me a, a countdown to like 50, 40, 30, 20, 15, 5 to go because when it was ramping up like this, I wanted to know how many laps are left because when it gets th two and three wide, you just want to be able to, to manage yourself and figure out where I, when and where I need to make a move. 
Well, and Bobby, you know, that's what I find so interesting. I don't think with, look at this four wide down this back straightaway. I'm just wondering if these guys aren't exactly sure when to go. And it just seems like right now they're taking advantage of every run they can get. Yeah, what I'm seeing now, Bobby, this is, this is a tough part of the race. You're two and three wide here. And everybody's fighting to a poor position, trying to get themselves in that spot where they feel like they got the best chance to win. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, I would have waited a little bit longer. I'm not sure that <laughs> right now you. was the time to do all this, but uh, they sure are racing really hard. Well, I think those Ford guys, they want to get lined up together. They saw what the Chevy guys did when they were lined up. To get those Ford guys back in front, hold everybody off. They've done it. The three Penske cars and the Wood Brothers 21, which is operated out of the Penske shops, those four are all together, and Ricky Stenhouse from Roush Fenway is right with them. So there's five Fords on the inside, much like we saw five Chevrolets earlier. Yeah, I think that's what they were fighting for, Mike, was to get lined up. 45 laps to go. Two laps to go. The fans are always fired up here in Talladega. And this weekend, Monster Energy brought out their best crews to hit the pavement and take to the skies before the race. I mean, the fans are right below us, Mike. There's, there's some folks down there. I don't know why they bought a seat. Because they haven't <laughs> said any yet. <laughs> well, one of the most famous names at Talladega has long been Earnhardt. Dale Earnhardt got his last cup victory here in the fall of 2000. He and Kenny Wallace drafted together to get to the front. Dale Jr., the Pied Piper around Talladega. And look at that black IK9 car. That is Jeffrey Earnhardt. Keeping the family name proud. Running in the top 15. Yeah, he, did a good, he did a really nice job yesterday in the Xfinity race, running the day. Having a nice day. Hey, we're in Earnhardt country. You could bet those fans would go crazy if he won this race. I think they'll go crazy if he just gets up in there and mixes it up a little bit like he's doing now. And what a show these fans are getting right now. This racing is really impressive to me. There's a look at Jeffrey, who is Kerry Earnhardt's son. Uh, Dale had three children. Kerry, Kelly, Dale Jr. And we want to send our condolences to the Earnhardt family on the loss of Dale Jr. and Kelly's mom, uh, Brenda Bell. Jackson, Robert G.'s daughter, who, who passed this week. Yes. Martin Truex trying to get, he, he's notched his first short track win. He's trying to get his first speedway win today, Matt. Mike, the car a little bit on the tight side, but like you mentioned, he's got a little bit of Earnhardt history. Those two Xfinity titles, his first Cup Series win. Right now, he's back at the point. You mentioned it took him 81 races to score his first short track win. Today is his 57th super speedway race. He's never won one. If he were to do it today, he'd be the first driver ever to go first short track and first super speedway wins back to back. Vince? Well, that driver right oh. behind him in the 38 is David Reagan, who has won here both in the Xfinity and the Cup Series. There's Reagan now dropping a couple of spots back, but it has been an impressive run today. But the handle has gone away from that car a little bit, and he said it is real edgy. And that's not a good position to be in in this kind of racing. Wow, that can just got really packed in turn number two. Oh, man, the two and the 20, uh, the two and the 12, I think it was down through the trial over here, Mike. It was sideways. I don't know how he saved it. And they're teammates. But oh, what, they are. As we see, the, that intensity is ramping up. They're starting to get tighter and tighter, pushing more and more. And those tires are starting to get pretty hot and become a factor right there. It's the two car behind the 22. 22, that's what it was. Watch Whoa, this. I don't, know, I don't know how you saved that thing. I really have. He, he, you know, the two just got him hooked on the right side of that bumper. But I think my Jeff and we're seeing what the guys were talking about the closing rate. When you get a run, you can really make a move. So all that happened a lap ago, and now look what happened. <laughs> 22 Four was wide. the lead. Oh boy. You see this little space in here where there's nothing? That's the eye of the storm. Three mid. 
she's starting to brew. Yeah, with all this happening, I'm going to be very surprised if this thing goes green all the way to the Still end. Three. Still three mid. 17, 10, 19 mid lane on your, on your tight quarter. Three mid. You know what this reminds me of, Mike? Da, da. <laughs> da, da. Ah, but which one's the shark and which one is the captain? <laughs> Somebody's going to take a bite out of the back of one of these boats in a minute. I know that. Hmm. Is this kind of racing? Does it? I mean, it makes me a nervous wreck. Trepidation. It's wondering what will happen and when. You know it's going to. I know. Have your run with a 95. You saw the closing rate right there on the 95 to Benedetto. He had a huge run as he got to the back of the 20, and then once you get there, he just stopped. It just seemed like, Mike and, and Jeff, today, it seemed like it's more through the trial and down toward turn one. Like you can really get a huge run off of turn four, and then it really carries a lot of speed into turn one. The Vice Titans with 35 laps to go and five Fords out front. Brad Kozlowski got turned around entering pit road. All the Chevys came in one lap ago. This is all the Fords and most of the Toyotas and somebody got in the back of the two. And, and Mike, the two's going the wrong way, by the way. He's headed. There you go, gets turned around. But he was in the box so oh, he, he could make the stop. Spun it right in there. Still under green with 33 laps to go. We saw where David Reagan was halfway in the box of Eric Jones. This gets real crazy here, just trying to slow down the cars. You can see them wiggling. That means they're on the brakes, trying not to lock yeah. up the tires. And oh, he nobody just hit him. I think he just break. wheel hopped and, and got the back of the car around, put him right yeah. in the box. How amazing is oh, that? Oh, man. Get him a t shirt <laughs> from, from Joey oh. Chitwood's Danger yeah. Angels right there. I hope oh. you wanted right sides. Yeah. Only Brad Kazowski could do that. <laughs> now, David Reagan. And Eric Jones says, you're in my box. You're in my pit. <laughs> so get lost. Oh my yeah, gosh. you can see that David Reagan just overshot his pit stall. <laughs> He's back. That was chaotic. I'm telling you. The new leader is Watermelon Man. The from Watermelon Florida. Ross Man. Chastain. Look at him go. Ross Chastain. Now, if you think he's an unlikely pick because he's been in 25th, 26th spot most of this run in the Daytona 500, Ross Chastain and this team finished in the top 10. And, and boy, at the end of last year, he thought he was in the catbird seat. He had a ride with Chip Ganassi, thought that was going to be a real break for him. Good to see him up front today. Now, remember when this last green flag stint and, and stop happened with this sequence. All those Chevrolets got lined up, Fords and Toyotas were mixed together. This is where the real action is going to be right. of who can get the lead and take control of this race. Right now, Joey Logano has it. So we'll mention that Ross Chastain is the only lead lap driver who has not yet made that pit stop. I, tell you, I, I don't think I've been able to say somebody has a better car than anybody else. Uh, you know, like we just saw with the with the 22 car Logano, he gets in front. He looks pretty good. And here comes Stenhouse, and then here comes Kyle Busch. It seems like you get those runs, and that's what makes the difference. Kyle Busch seems to have the best car at changing lanes. Ooh. Stenhouse seems to have the best car to pull up and pass and to push. Yes. <laughs> Obviously, one car missing out of this group. That number two car, Brad Keselowski, with that incident on pit road, have to spin that car back around. He's a little bit further back. Yeah, he's going to need well, some help. And, and Jeff, as we said earlier, if you lose the draft and have to run around here by yourself, you're going to be about four seconds slower than the pack drafting along at close to 200 miles an hour. Maybe you can find some help out there. Uh, he, yeah, he's almost a half a lap behind. I didn't realize he lost as much time as he did. He and the other yeah, way back. 30 laps to go in the Geico 500. 28 laps to go. Let's look at today's race recap sponsored by Geico. Lap 11, 
Bubba Wallace gets in the back of Ryan Blaney. Comes up off the apron right into Michael McDowell. That also took Kevin Harvick and Matt Tift out of the race along with those two. And eventually Denny Hamlin fell by the wayside all because of damage at lap number 11. Jimmy Johnson ran over a piece of debris, cut a tire, hit the wall. He's currently 10 laps down. Ty Dillon, your stage one winner. Close calls on pit road. Al Marola there with Suarez and Joey Logano feels out in front of Clint Boyer. Chase Elliott won stage two and then Brad Keselowski locks him up coming on to pit road. He does land in the box so they can complete the service. Send it back out but he's about a second and a half behind the pack. Or rather he's about a second and a half a lap slower than the pack out front of him. So he's hoping for a caution flag. We still have 27 cars on the lead lap and Ross Chastain, <laughs> yeah. who is on a contrary strategy to everybody who stopped at lap 154 and 55, is your race leader. Yeah, he's uh, he's going down the back now and the lead pack here, the Logano and Alm are just now going in turn one. So he's got a huge lead at this point. Now he will have to stop. He is off sequence, but continues to lead. And with that, a quick word from Duracell. This is the number one trusted brand. So Ross Chastain, certainly a long shot, but if he catches a caution, things could just go his way and keep him in the mix. Like we said at the top of the day, if you're in it, you could win it. Larry? Yeah, remember, everybody pitted at lap 133 on that last caution so Ross Chastain it appears that what they're going to do they're going to go as far as they can so I would say somewhere around 18 20 maybe 22 laps to go that's when he'll be on pit road and Jeff had actually asked me a question during commercial break and I think this is good information to share of all the drivers that pitted on the green the only drivers that did two tires Kyle Busch uh, Ryan Blaney Paul Menard as well as Martin Trex Jr. so out of all those drivers four of them took Two tires, everybody else did fuel only. That could sure come into play as we get down to the closing line. Well, yeah, I've seen it a couple of times, the end of some of these stages where the guys look like they were just barely hanging on. Well, I remember a lot of those guys took four tires that didn't take tires this time, took four tires under that caution. Right now, Kyle Busch is our Toyota top performer in fourth. Truex Di Benedetto and Eric Jones and Jeffrey Earnhardt all on the lead lap. And Mike, one thing about now at this point in the race, you know what you got. You know, you know what your car is capable of doing. So now you're just thinking position. Where do I want to be to make a run at this thing at the end of the day? Because Jeff and I debated this. You want to be in the front? You want to be the leader? Or do you want to be second or third? And Ross Chastain will give up the lead. 300, 10 away. And bring his number 15 to pit road to Pat Trison and crew. That will cycle Ricky Stenhouse back to the front spot. Ricky's last win season and a half ago at Daytona NASCAR's other two and a half plus mile super speedway. Yeah, there was a time uh, about a year and a half ago, two years ago, that that 17 car was the car to beat when he came to Daytona and Talladega. Jimmy Fennick and that crew at Roush Fenway, they, like the Wood Brothers, have a habit of building really fast super speedway equipment. Daniel Suarez in fifth. Little soda machine battle here between Suarez <laughs> and Chase Elliott. If Chase wins the race tonight, you can get 10 free boneless wings when you buy any 10 on Monday, or get free fried pickles if Chase finishes this race in the top 10. Guys are, you know, behaving pretty well right now. You've got that inside lane form, that outside lane form. Not a lot of side drafting, not a lot of bump drafting going on. They seem to be settling down right here with 22 laps to go. I, I just think you're just getting your act together. 
you're starting to think about, okay, what about where do I need to be? How am I going to block if they get a run on me? How am I going to win this race? That's what you're thinking. Well, there's an added factor here, and it's the one our pit reporters talked about just before we went green. Each of the three participating manufacturers, Ford, Chevrolet, and Toyota, had kind of sternly worded discussions with their team saying, if you're going to push somebody to the win, make sure he's driving the same brand you are. Well, just that 22 car just did something that he did all by himself. He drove around the leader and got in, to, he drove around the 17 and took the lead. Yeah, he had all a by nice, himself. He had, well, he had a nice push from behind, gained a bunch of momentum, and was able to clear the 17 of Ricky Stenhouse. But as we've seen out of Stenhouse, I don't know, he must have missed the Ford meeting or something because <laughs> <laughs> he seems to not want and be content with riding in second no matter who's in front of him. Well, look at that black number one right in the midst of things. Kurt Busch, he is the only Chevrolet in the top five right now. He has another Camaro, Chase Elliott, right behind him. He's on a one-year deal with Chip Ganassi Racing. That. Daniel Suarez. Great move by Daniel Suarez to go three wide and get to second place. I really think it was the best move was by the 22 of Logano. He, he created that situation right there. Boy, not a good situation if you're the 19 of Mark Truex Jr. stuck in that outside lane right now. He's got help coming. Well, he did from Matt Benedetto, but the 95 went back to the middle lane and pulled up behind Almirola. And what I see Logano now doing is he is blocking. He sees which which energy, which lane has the most push, which has the most energy, and that's where he tries to go. Oh, I see right here. He blocks this yep. move. That might get him in trouble. It's going to actually make cost. Him out here. Here he comes. That one cost Suarez. Suarez, Suarez, Suarez lifted. And Suarez was doing everything he could to stay off Joey. Yeah, yeah he knew that if he pushed him through the trial, well, that's one of the most sensitive areas on this racetrack. That probably would have spun out Joey Logano. Here comes our front row starter here, Amarola. He's up in the middle of this whole thing. Watch this big run that's going to come from the 41 of Suarez. He's being Woo! pushed by that 18 car. There it is. And on the outside, Truex gets to the 17. Wow, look that at this gives run. Stenhouse a, bo a boost. Oh, man, it just stalls out. He, just, uh, he doesn't know which. Suarez can't make up his mind which way to go. Well, I think I'll go. No, I think I can't make up his mind yet. Maybe he doesn't want to be leading right now. That's my thinking, Jeff. He's being a loyal soldier for now and working with Logano. You'll see it all side by side watching the Geico 500 on Fox. 15 laps to go. Joey Logano out front. Matt DiBenedetto with him now. Kyle Busch, a Ford leading Toyotas side by side. Then Suarez, Almirola, and Blaney in Fords. Kurt Busch is the first Chevrolet, his number one in sixth place. Joey Logano talking about leading here late in the race and what you have to do. It's important to be out front for one. Uh, you know, you're able to, you know, control the field a little bit, bring the field where you want them to be, whether it's top or bottom or trying to single file them out or try to have them racing back there. You, you can control all that as a leader. And also, it's the safest place to be. <laughs> yeah. And there's the big one. The pack is flying apart. When there's 15 to go and you're sitting 10th or 15th, you're thinking, man, I'm in a bad spot. They're, they're going to crash at some point. You got to be able to get yourself towards the front really early in the race and just to hold that track position. There's Logano, his green and white Mustang on the outside against Kyle Busch, his Toyota on the inside. And Still down there, barely there. It's 12 pushing out there. You're clear. You're clear. Watching your team build a run to the bottom. Make that 12 help you if you have to. They're side by side, still in your mirror. Two back. That's two Logano's back, spotter, two TJ back, Majors. Lane. He's got help from our teammate lane, Ryan Blaney lane. and Stenhouse. And I'll give There's Joey no and TJ no Majors a lot Tomorrow of credit because I didn't think... Half a car out front. He's getting a big push. 12 will probably get pushed free here. The I didn't... Free, the 12 is free <laughs> with you. And he's getting his money. He's earning his money today. But I just really didn't think anybody could control these lanes with this, the closing rate today as well as Joey Logano has done so far today. And you got to give a lot of credit to all that information TJ Majors is giving him. Hey, here yeah. comes Suarez up the outside. He's got to run. Logano's won three of the last seven races here. He must be pretty good. <laughs> 
Suarez and DiBenedetto got all the way up side by side with Paul Menard and then stalled out a bit. Well, Suarez, remember, he was up there in the top three or four, and it looked like uh, a move made was made, and he got shoveled, shuffled out to the outside lane a little bit, went further back, but I think he has a fast enough race car. He can work his way back up there. Oh, we got brothers here going side by side with Kurt Busch going to take his brother Kyle three wide. Well, that's their training. That, Kyle did that to Kurt a while ago, so it's a payback. <laughs> and Kurt now has help from the number nine and 88 Chevrolets of Chase Elliott and Alex Bowman. And unfortunately, you saw there the 10 of Eric Almarola had no help as he went to the, or was stuck in that outside lane. And he drifts back towards Suarez. So Larry Mack, 12 laps to go. Well, Mike, in the eight races since the Daytona 500, we have only had 18 cautions in the final stage. But you know what? This is Talladega. And in the last 10 spring Talladega races, the average of the last caution lap, 181, seven laps to go. And it's seven times it's happened in the final 10 laps, 14 total overtime finishes at Talladega all time. Did you see Ryan, the hands wow. on Ryan Blaney trying to keep that car in a straight line as Mark Jerks Jr. was giving him a push? But Blaney, it, it took him forever to get the thing under control. He about, I, I never saw anybody not wreck with that car out of control. Well, like the that. spotters saw the Truex had a runoff turn number two, so they moved both Logano and Blaney up to the outside to block. It worked well for Logano, for Blaney, not so much. But to me, that when, when we talk about cautions coming inside seven to go, that's what it's going to come from. Somebody blocking that big run. And, and there's just going to be too much contact to the rear bumper. Watch this. Boom. The 19 gives a big shot. Right here, big shot, big shot. Right here, he gets the 12 car gets so out of shape. I don't know how he saved that car. Look at it, he's still wiggling. And I know at home that may look, oh, that was minor. Trust me, that was major. Oh, I just, I was looking through the windshield from that other angle, and you could see his hands. He has white gloves on, and they were going full lot left and right. Ryan Blaney got moved back to 11th, but here he comes, and who he's up against? The 19. He's now up against Martin's bumper. Yep. Let's see how this works out. They just keep repaying the favors. You just watch it. You look through the windshield of these cars when we got a shot at him. You see those gloves moving around. That guy is busy in there, buddy. Nine to go. This is what you get paid for. You, you come to Talladega, these last 10 laps, this is where you earn your money. Yeah, you know how much those first 178 laps pay? <laughs> yeah. Nothing. And that guy sitting in second, he's already been off to a great start this season with some wins. Hasn't really done well on super speedways, especially here at Talladega, but he does have one win all the way back to 2008. Well, you got two guys right there, the 20, the uh, 22 and the 18. They got wins. The guy in third, he is desperate. He knows this is an opportunity. He doesn't want to let it get away. Kurt Bush, Bush, same thing. Kurt He's had Bush. a great car. Yeah, he, he finished second here, I think, a year ago in this race. Our pole sitter, Austin Dillon's back up into the top 10. The front five, two Fords, one Toyota, two Chevrolets. I think they're just right now. You're just you're setting everything up. It's a, you're, you're getting everything in position. Kyle Busch, he knows what he wants to do. Well, the manufacturer that is best aligned right now is Chevy. They have three cars in line. The one, the nine, and the 88 positions three, four, five. Yeah, I think it's going to take a little bit more than that. But as you saw right there, the 18 of Kyle Busch, if he's able to get to the rear bumper of the 22 of Logano and push him like that, that means he's going to be able to get side by side with him at some point. And look at him. Uh, you got, this is Joy Logano watching. He's uh, looking, he's not at, even that looking at the he's front not looking forward at all. He's looking behind him. Seven to go. That right there, you know what I call that? That's sitting on a hot stove and peeing ice water, baby. I'm <laughs> telling you. Turn the wall, Chris Buescher. And he gets tagged by DiBenedetto. Truex is in it. And so is the 77 of rookie Justin Hamlin. Right on cue. 19 of Truex getting caught up in this. Larry, that trend was nobody's friend. Seven to go. We're gonna fire on the 95 to Benedetto. Having a great day, just running so well all day long. Good to see him climb out. Chris Busher took a hard hit. And there's Haley. 
his rookie run spoiled. That's a tough way to end it with seven laps to go. Oh, good to see Chris Buescher climb out. A lot of damage to these cars. I'm sorry, that's uh, one of the safety workers there talking to him. Uh, he has put the window net down, and that is a signal to the safety crew uh, that he is okay. Boy, that was a bell ringer for it Busher. Really Boy, was. it sure was. He got turned around in a hurry. And here's Chris climbing out. The Prosper Texas driver is okay. But that car took a vicious hit. And Martin Truex, Caddy Wampus, coming to pit road. Yep. After getting wrapped up in that one. So coming off turn number two. So Busher is third on the outside. You know, yeah, and keep an eye on. I believe the 10 car of Amarola gets a nice run behind Chris Busher. He almost tries to make it three wide right there. Busher comes down. A little bit of contact oh. right there and just turns the 37 around. Boy, and Benedetto oh, had big. nowhere to go. And Truex had nowhere to go. So happy to see that 37 car stay Haley. on the ground. When the 95 hit him, yeah, yep. big hit by Haley in the 77. Wow. Here's another look, and we'll watch Almirola in the 10, and Chris Busher in this 37. So you, Almirola thought about going three wide. That door was shut, and not able to see the contact. But I know, the, I mean, the way that car turned so abruptly, yeah. you know, the contact was in. Then, wow, look at this. Unbelievable. Saw Corey LaJoy just thread the needle and get through there. Wow, it's a hard hit. Here with Daniel Suarez. Boy, what an impact that is. To move. I, I mean, think about that. What, 3,400 pounds of metal flying up in the air like it's a little toy. 200 mile an hour. Martin Truex, Truex trying to avoid Ryan, it and Ryan. almost got through. And then Justin Haley, nowhere to go. Nope. See Suarez just squeaking through there. A lot of carbon fiber on the back straight away after that. Those hoods, deck lids. All the drivers have exited their cars under their own power. And the cars have been stopped with six laps to go. Four cars. Involved in this one, it looks like only Truex may be able to continue. And these were all lead lap cars. They all had a shot to win it. Oh, yeah. Six laps from now. Sure, they'd both been right up in the thick of things. And uh, Haley was having a great run earlier today and uh, ends up like this. And, and I, I thought it was interesting that we asked Larry what the trends were. And I, what did Larry say? Seven to go. Seven to go. And the crash happened with seven, seven to, go. to go. On the money. Well, I know somebody that is happy that that caution came when it did, and that's Brad Keselowski yeah, and Eric yeah. Jones. Yeah, they'll be able to catch up. You saw Todd Gordon, Joey Logano's crew chief. He is the race leader as we're halted with six to go from Kyle Busch and Ricky Stenhouse. So now Keselowski, who was a more than half a lap behind the lead pack, looks like he'll be one of the 24, make it 25, as David Reagan uh, should be the free pass car. 25 lead lap cars when we resume. All right, the pits will open. All drivers are eligible to pit. And when they come to the line, it'll be one to go. We'll see how many stay out and see if any of us called this right. Not that it matters. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm going with Larry. <laughs> he seems to be 
on top of it a lot more than us. There's your top five. Uh, you saw Ryan Priest, the rookie there is eighth. And what I'm looking at with those top five, you got second of Kyle Busch. You got four, uh, or sorry, with his brother Kurt Busch behind him. All right. And Tom's got Stenhouse. Excuse me, who picked Alvarola because he's the 10th place car <laughs> and he's in? Yeah. I said 10th on back. I said 8th yes, on back. Yes, you did. No. Jeff gets the win. Whew. Well, we'll see who gets the win. <laughs> yeah. And they're putting right sides on Alvarola's car. I'm going to come down and get tired. I'm going to get me four. I'm not going to just get two. Ty Dillon getting tires. Four of them. He heard you. Yeah, no, if you're going to pin, you're going to get tired. You might as well get four. Yeah, I don't know two is going to do you much good. Now, there will be 25 cars on the lead lap, so these cars will be starting about row eight on back. Let's go to the care center and Vince. And Chris Busher has been checked and released. What happened? Uh, yeah, we just got turned. I mean, um, we had a... Had a good driving car. Uh, we put ourselves in a good, good position there with uh, you know, just a handful of laps to go. And um, you know, our Tide Pods Camaro was was pretty good. It just turned right. I mean, we got we got hit hard enough. It just turned it right in the outside fence. So um, destroyed a race car. Destroyed several race cars. Uh, just so typical of these racetracks. So gets frustrating every time you come to these places. End up. Something like this uh, throughout the race, and it's just not very much fun. Glad you're okay, Mike. Thanks, Vince. 13 cars stayed on the racetrack and did not pit. The first car to stop in the running order uh, would be Ryan Newman. So from Newman Almirola on down, there is the cut line. 13 stayed out. So Newman Almirola, Dylan Suarez. Can you win it from there with tires? I don't know. You're going to have to. You're just going to have so few laps to go. I just don't know if you can or not. Kyle Busch will restart on the front row. We get uh, green white checkers. All these guys we're racing are in worse fuel situation than us. Um, us doing right there. We put more fuel on under green than they did. We've also got about 20 laps newer right than uh, everybody in the top 10 except for the 21. Wow. That's, that's a big advantage. Could be. Here we go. We'll come green with four laps to go. Logano and Bush. Stenhouse and Bush. Elliott and Bowman. Menard and Dillon. Priest and Larson, the top ten. Oh, yeah. It's going to be all about who gives the best push and which line is the most organized. Right now, better push come from the 17 of Stenhouse. Whoa, buddy. Oh, Kyle Kurt. Bush is going to get hung out. Yeah, Kurt drove down underneath him and let him, left him hung out. I'm thinking that's probably good news for uh, the Joy Logano. Four wide off turn two. Boy, look at that's Eric Jones with that the big three. run. Pushing the 20 of Eric Jones to the rear bumper and the three of Austin Dillon. Kurt Busch not messing around. How did Kurt Busch get to the inside yeah, of Ricky just, Stenhouse? He just nosed him out of the way, moved Stenhouse up. Chevy's lined up on oh. the bottom behind Logano, who goes up and Kurt with him. Buddy. Opened up the door for Chase Elliott on the inside. That it did. Chase has got his teammate Alex Bowman pushing, going to take the lead here. I think this can really pay off for these guys. We know what they can do. We've seen them do it earlier today. Three to go. Chase Elliott out front. Pretty optimistic we're going to make it to the white flag, but we may. Three to go. Logano on the outside, Kurt Busch behind him, then Almirola. Chevy's on the bottom. Well, they are slicing and dicing. I know that. Back in there. Whoa, whoa. I, 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 I see a lot. Of oh, we got the 20 of Eric Jones going around. Down on the apron, out of harm's way. No caution. No, he kept it straight, kept it going. But that's one Fired last car down. to battle for the win. Well, you got you got the nine lead, and you got his teammate running second, and look who's running third. Priest in that 47 car. How That's about pretty that? Impressive. Two rookies, really. And, and Henry, the tail, yeah, Henry Henry. right there. Four Chevys in front. Logano trying to make something happen on the outside in that green car. Got to get down there and do a little side drafting. 
I don't think he's got enough to get up there. Oh, now, see Stenhouse st uh, jumping out there. That's going to slow the momentum of that lane that Logano's leading. But can Stenhouse come up and Logano move up with him and put two forwards trying to get to the front? That's absolutely the best thing that Chase Elliott could have asked for right there. I think it's going to take a whole nother lap to get that outside lane organized. You can't do it. I just don't see it happening. That nine car is in the driver's seat. Oh, oh Stenhouse. No. Stenhouse happened? pounds the wall, but they took the white flag sponsored by Credit One Bank under green. Stenhouse. No caution. Is it? Trying no to get caution, away. Yeah. Here they come. Chase Elliott, Alex Bowman, Ryan Priest, Logano on the outside. Oh. And Byron's Byron. around. He crashes. Caution oh. is out. Heavy, heavy oh, impacted oh. inside wall by the 42 of Larson. Man. Kyle Larson, Jeffrey Earnhardt with heavy damage, and William Byron. Man. On the last lap. Well, that was really scary looking. That 42 was floating through the air as he made it uh, con um, impact to that inside wall. Well, these three Chevy drivers did as ordered, worked together. And with the checkered flag, Chase Elliott wow. has brought the Elliott name back to victory lane at Talladega. Great job. Chevy, Brian, one, two, Brian. three, four. Great effort, guys. Thank you so much. Great execution. That's what we needed. Needed this one bad. Kyle, Kyle Larson is out, and yeah, that's good to see. His difficult season continues. Ooh. Fourth career win for Chase Elliott. All coming in his last 25 races. And he's the sixth driver to win in 2019 and the first Chevrolet to go to victory lane this year. What a hard tumble wow. for Kyle Larson. Oh, man. And that was after a really hard hit with that front nose to the inside wall. It just won't stop. <sighs> David Reagan, who had a great race going, climbing into the support vehicle after getting out. And there is William Byron with heavy damage on his camera. So at the moment of caution, Chase Elliott by a car length over teammate Alex Bowman and rookie Ryan Priest and rookie Daniel Hemrick. Chevrolet front four with Joey Logano fifth for Ford and Kyle Busch ninth for Toyota. Going down there a little bit further in the 62 car, Brendan Gone finished 10th. Great run for the part time driver, part time Le cup driver. LaJoy, 11th. Corey LaJoy. Jeffrey Earnhardt sliding to the inside barrier. A pretty hard hit there. Well, as we learned at the top of the day, Chevrolet met with all their team, owners and crew chiefs yesterday and said, work together. Message delivered. Message delivered. Well laid out plan, and I bet you see them do that a lot more the rest of the year on these plate, uh, these uh, big super speedways. Today's victory by Chase Elliott was fueled by Sunoco. Sunoco is fueling victories all season long. Alan Gustafson, crew chief. Got a big smile on his face. He knows how hard these races are to win. <laughs> There's a smoke show. And don't, don't, now I know this is Earnhardt country, but today <laughs> it might just be Elliott country. That boy knew how to do the do today, I'm telling you. He led a lot of laps on the race. Well, we're a little over 100 miles west of Atlanta. So this is both Earnhardt and Elliott country. His dad was a fan favorite and a winner here. And now so is Chase Elliott. Here's Jamie Little. Chase Elliott, you heard it on the radio, how important this win was for this team, for Chevrolet, for Chase Elliott. Chevrolet waited since last October, their last win, and they did it in thrilling fashion. I'll wait for Chase to pull that helmet off. 
Chase, the fans haven't sat down for a long time. What do you have to say to them? Just thank you. What a uh, what a day. Just a huge thanks to all of our partners, my team, uh, Hendrick Motorsports, Chevrolet. Obviously, a lot of a lot of teamwork done today. So uh, big thanks to Mountain Dew, Little Caesars, Napa, all our partners that make this happen. But you guys up there, you really what makes it happen. Thank you. Chase, I talked to you and your crew chief this morning, and you talked about the Chevrolet meeting, and Alan Gustafson said something was different this time. We are going to make it work. How important was that today? Uh, it was huge. Um, you know, uh, we uh, just had a plan and, and executed it really well. Obviously, could have uh, could have gone both ways, but you know, fortunately, everybody stayed together and stayed the course and had some help on that last lap with a caution, but just. Appreciate uh, all the support, man. This is unbelievable. This is a uh, this is a special one. This is close to home for me, so feels a little bit like a home race. Thank you, guys. Chase Elliott, the Georgia boy, wins at Talladega. Matt? Bow ties, bow ties in the top four, so a great execution of sticking to the plan. Yeah, we there was no plan coming off turn four, but uh, unfortunately we didn't get there before the caution came out. So. Just uh, big props to, to Chevrolet and everybody at Hendrick Motorsports. They brought great race cars here. We had a great nationwide Chevy from the time we unloaded and uh, showed a lot of speed. We all stuck to our plans and executed really well. So props to uh, everybody back at home at HMS and in the fab shop, the engine shop, and everybody that makes this deal possible. So if the caution didn't come out, you were going to try to make a move on him? Yeah, I'm not just going to let him win, right? i got to try. Um, you know, I, I knew I could get to his quarter panel. I, I was pretty confident I could get to his quarter panel through the tri-oval, and who knows who's going to get to the line first at that point. I, I thought I could do it, but depends on the car behind you where he goes. And uh, it would have been fun to try, but uh, happy for Chase and Nationwide and Exalta and everybody that uh, lets us keep doing this thing. It's uh, I'm, I'm glad to kind of turn the season around. It's been a rough start to the year. and. These guys deserve way better than the finishes they've had. So to, to come home second, it's not a win, but uh, it's headed in the right direction. A great momentum builder indeed, Mike. Thanks, Matt. Uh, William Byron drove that damaged car all the way to the start finish line, and we saw him climb out and get to the ambulance under his own power. Always good news. Well, let's show you what happened on the final lap as Chase Elliott tears the place up on the way to victory lane. So this is coming off a of turn two onto the back straightaway. Oh yeah, you can just see, it looks like the 38 goes up the racetrack, makes contact with the 24 Byron. And that sends Jeffrey Earnhardt and Kyle Larson. Look at the air get under the right rear of the 42. Wow. Heavy Ooh. contact with that right front, Thank or, sorry, left front. That's safer barrier with the air. Thank goodness for that. But watch this thing, once it starts flipping, it's like a feather, it just won't stop. It looks like the 38 of Reagan just, I don't know if he gets loose or something. You know, obviously the car wasn't in the racetrack right there, sent him up the racetrack. Wow. Pretty lucky right there, William Byron didn't go upside down as you saw the car get up off the ground and then settle back down. But that was not the case for the 40, 42 of Larson. That's a ride, buddy. Chase Elliott will celebrate at the world's fastest speedway after a wild ending to the Geico 500.